in space. Hey, hey. An, adventure An adventure with Rocky Star. <laughs> Rocky, Mitch, and I are back on Earth, sitting back comfortably in the dining room of the spaceport at the end of an excellent meal. Well, I certainly feel a better man for that meal, Mitch. Yeah, me too, Rocky boy. King of grasshoppers, I'd forgotten how scrumptious Earth food can be. <laughs> you know what? Mm -hmm. I reckon eating's my favorite hobby. Well, practically, anyway. And that steak smothered in mushrooms, oh, mm. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's really good to be back again. Though, uh, after Muir ties lighter gravity, I'm still not properly adjusted to it. <laughs> yeah, me either. You know, when I walk, I feel like I'm stuck to the floor. <laughs> and drink of liquid still, they pour so easily, uh, I'm never ready for them. Yeah, I noticed you tip more coffee down your shirt front than you managed oh, to swallow. Oh, lay off. <laughs> I wondered why you didn't seem so thirsty. I wonder what's keeping Di so long. Oh, she's probably having a whale of a time in front of a mirror somewhere, making up her face. Yeah, make up. The minute we hit Earth, this always happens. She gets busy on her renovations. Hey, Rocky, there's, uh, there's no news about what sort of job they've got lined up for us next, is there? Well, Mitch, just a confirmation of the message we got out of space. <laughs> oh, well, what does this character want, hmm? Say, yeah, looks like a messenger. Hey, are you Rocky Star, please, mister? Yeah, that's right. Gee, I didn't think it'd really be you. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, well, look, if Rocky's Exhibit A, I'm Exhibit B. So just get a load of Mitch, boy, just get a load of Mitch. Mitch? Yeah, you can tell your friend you met Mitch in person. Mitch? That's me. Mitch who? Oh, who is he, Mr. Starr? I never heard of him. You what? You never heard him? He never heard him? <laughs> hey, let's have Why, that message. I, I... You better clear out of here before he bursts a blood vessel. He, he, he never heard him. It's, it's a radiogram, Mr. Starr. Okay, thanks. Never. Look, where are you believing? Hey, uh, lame brain, <laughs> come here. What do you know about that? He bolted uh, like a rabbit before I could even explain away. He... <laughs> Never heard of me, he said. For all I've done, gratitude. Hey, what's the message, Rocky boy? Orders at last? Yeah. In a way. Yeah, read it for yourself. Thanks. Rocky Star, please take first transoceanic rocket for London. Urgent mission waiting. Request all speed. The president of the soda council, huh? Hey, looks like this might be it, all right. Yeah, better make a start right away. Like to come, too? Oh, 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 not this, baby. My name wasn't mentioned, remember? Now it's me for a nice long rest. Uh, unless you really want me, Rocky. No, no, no. You can let Di know where I've disappeared to. London, eh? Yeah, I wonder what's in the wind this time. Rocky leaves the dining room, hurries to the nearest phone, and books a passage on the first rocket for London. Soon the great silver ship is streaking through the stratosphere at tremendous speed. In a matter of hours, Rocky is being ushered along a corridor in the administrative headquarters of the Solar Council. His guide stops outside a certain door. Rocky Star, sir. Oh, come in, Star, come in. You've made good time. Well, the message said the matter was urgent, sir. Yes, it is. Uh, sit down, Rocky. Thank you. Well, <laughs> what this time? None of your staff would tell me a thing. Is it a secret? Uh, well, well, yes. Uh, just one moment. Uh, there are some people in the next room I'd like you to meet. Uh, will you come in now, please? Uh, Rocky Star. May I introduce Wilhelm Kromatz, Governor of the Federated States of Europe. How do you do? How do you do? And Wallace Rankin, World Professor of Nuclear Electronics. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, please, Mr. Starr, has the matter been explained to you? No, sir. I'm still waiting to hear. Uh, briefly, Rocky, the position is this. Three youngsters have got hold of a spacecraft and gone off on a sort of space joyride. A, a space joyride? We, we need your help in this matter, Mr. Starr, as quickly as possible. They can't be allowed to wander into unknown dangers up there and bring them back before it's too late. Steady, Professor. It uh, may not be as serious as that. Well, of course it's serious. Out in space, anything might happen. But if... I can't help thinking how the Pegasus went out nearly a hundred years ago and has never been heard of since. It could happen again. 
Not if I can stop it, Professor Rankin. I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I should try to hold on to academic calm, but it's not very easy. The professor's daughter, Ilma, is one of those on the craft, Rocky. Oh, I see. The others are Governor Kramatsi's son, Ivan, and Paul M. Steiberg, son of my assistant secretary. I cannot understand how they could do such a foolhardy thing. Space has a fascination for many people, Governor. They obviously have no understanding of the dangers. My son has made one trip to the moon. Well, that's hardly training enough for travel in outer space. They can't have understood what they were doing. And to take off with valuable equipment, such as a spaceship, worth millions. It seems so stupid and useless to tell the Solar Council I am sorry, but what else can I say? No, Governor Kromart, please forget that. Our main worry is to locate the ship and bring the youngsters back safely. Can it be done, Mr. Starr? I'll... Well, I'll do my best, sir, but I'm afraid it's hardly the sort of thing that I can promise. Out in space, they could be anywhere. Oh, uh, the letter. Ivan Kramatz left behind a letter, Rocky. Uh, yes, I have forgotten. Here. Oh, thank you. You see what he says. They are going out to discover and see things for themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, gentlemen, what, what's this about Ilma satisfying herself about Saturn? My daughter was always fascinated by Saturn. Mm -hmm. It appears that they may be trying to go there. But no one's ever reached Saturn. Uh, there is another possibility. Paul Steiberg's father tells me Paul has been anxious to study solar radiation from Mars. Perhaps they've made for there. But uh, there's no mention of Mars here. What it says is, at least Ilma will satisfy herself about Saturn. Saturn... The very edge of the solar system. Hey, Mr. Starr, please, you will find them. You will bring them back. Well, I'll do my best, sir. I'm afraid that's all I can promise. Oh, well, thank you. It's a great comfort. Now, we must not interfere with your preparations. Uh, yes, gentlemen, if you'll leave me to discuss details with Rocky Starr. Uh, yes, of course. If there's anything that we can do... I'll let you know, Professor. We are most grateful, Mr. Starr. Uh, goodbye, gentlemen. I'll get in touch with you later. Well, Rocky? Well, sir, to find a runaway ship somewhere out in space, it, it's almost impossible. The reference to Saturn does give you a course to follow. Yes, but if they don't know anything about astro-navigation, they might finish up anywhere. Has there been any attempt to contact them by microwave? Uh, yes, so far there's been no reply at all. It'd be worse than looking for a needle in a haystack. The young Steiberg is pretty good at mathematics, I believe. It's quite possible he's computed the right course. Well, I've got to do something to help them, somehow. Perhaps if you can set a course for Saturn and use super radar... I'll try. But it's going to be expensive, cruising around in space like that. Who's going to foot the bill? Ah, the Solar Council. Well, sir, I, I know important people are concerned, and... Well, I'm all for doing everything to help, but uh, won't there be a scandal if the newspapers get to hear about this? No, no, because we want to make it a journey of exploration as well. Exploration? You, you want us to look out for new planets? Something much more important than that. I'll tell you more when you're ready to leave. Well, why the mystery? I'm sorry, Rocky, but at the moment it's probably the most tremendous secret the world has ever known. All I can say is that for humanity, the thing we want you to look for must be found. How soon can you be ready to take off? Well, the streak must have an overhaul, but I can have it done at top priority rate if you'll give me an authority, sir. You have it. All right, I'll radio to Mitch, and we may be ready in two or three days' time. Good man. All I can think of is those inexperienced kids out in space. Yes, I wonder how they feel about things now. <laughs> At that very moment, out in space, the stolen ship makes its lonely way. Inside on the control deck, Paul Steiberg has just struggled out of unconsciousness. Now he bends and shakes his companions. Hey, you two. Wake up. Hey. Oh, wake up, Ilmer. Oh, oh, come on, wake up. Go away. Sleepy. Listen, we've been unconscious for hours. Unconscious? Yes, Earth's just a small globe away in the distance. Earth? Oh, we're in space. Ivan, we're in space. And he's still out to it. Oh, oh I feel awful. Oh, me too. Space sickness. I think I'm going to die. Oh, Paul. Paul. No, it's all right, Elmer. It's all right. No. Listen, oh. we've done it. Just concentrate on that. 
We got away with the ship and now we're on our way. But where? We set the course before we took off, remember? You all must think we're actually on our way to Mars. <laughs> At that very moment, Paul's face twists for a moment with space sickness, but he fights it down with a triumphant grin. On their way to Mars, and back on Earth, people think they're headed for Saturn. But what of their course? Have they set it accurately? And how can Rocky possibly find them? There is thrilling action ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this exciting Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky has been given what seems an almost hopeless task to find and overtake three youngsters who have gone off in a borrowed spaceship. The Joy Riders have no space experience and it is almost certain they will become lost out in the void. Grim-faced, Rocky sends Mitch a radiogram, instructing him to have the streak prepared for blast-off as soon as possible. Meanwhile, far away from Earth, the three joyriders are not feeling at all happy in their unusual surroundings. Oh, I'm so dreadful. I'm sure I'll die. What? Where? Oh, what has happened? What? Paul, Ivan is awake. Paul? Ivan, where is Paul? I don't know. He was here a moment ago. Oh, I am ill. Why am I so ill? Face sickness. Oh. oh, you're awake, Ivan. I am dying. Look, I found these. Take one. Oh, go away. <coughs> go away. But they're tablets for space sickness. It says on the box. Then give me one quickly. I... Paul, you are floating above the floor. Now, there's no gravity. Here, Ilma, you better have one, too. It, it will not go down. Well, it's not easy to swallow without gravity. You'll have to force it down. I cannot. Well, if it's worth it. I had one, I feel fine now. I'll do anything to stop this awful feeling. It's stuck. Well, here, there's water in this space bottle. Here, drink. Ilma first. The water won't come. Well, it can't fall with no gravity. You have to squeeze the bulb. Uh, squeeze it gently. Now swallow hard. Oh, here, Ivan, I can't. Well, try. Oh. Now, look, get up gently. You'll hit the ceiling if you don't. When we move, we'll have to use the hand grips on the walls to when we get used to things. Oh, I think I'm starting to feel a bit better. Look, there's Earth. Oh, we must have traveled a long way, Paul. It looks so small. Oh, well, look through the magnifier. The shadowed part's having night. The other half's in daylight. Oh, blue and green. And the clouds, they're... They're like bands of cotton wool around us. Oh, Paul, look at the brightness where the sun's glinting on the sea. Look there near the curve. All around us, the universe, Ilma. Space. A black sky filled with stars. Like night all the time. Hey, you too. How are you feeling now, Ivan? Oh, much better. I've switched on the radio. Let's try and pick up Earth. Oh, good idea. We might find out what reaction has been. I would like to know if they plan to follow us. I will switch it to audio. He's calling us. Should we answer? We'll be furious at us for taking the ship. Wouldn't it be better not to? We left that note hinting that we were going to Saturn. But how about making sure they really believe that? But how? We could send a message saying we're okay and well on our way to Saturn. Then any pursuit will be sent on the wrong course. Are you agreeable, Ilma? I couldn't be... I couldn't bear for us to be chased and brought back like... like naughty school children. And once we've proved that we can get to where we want to, there won't be much that they can say, will there? Well, that's what I feel. Then go ahead. Okay, Ivan. Switch over to transmission and tell them. Tell them it's going to be Saturn or bust. <laughs> For the moment, they seem the best arrangements we can make for chasing the Taurus. 
If you'll let me know as soon as you're ready for blast off, I... I... Oh, yes? We've just made contact with the Taurus, sir. They've sent a message that they're headed for Saturn. So, it is Saturn. Uh, are you still in contact? We asked them to keep tuned in, sir. Uh, Rocky, would you have a word with them? Perhaps you can talk them out of this crazy scheme. Well, it's worth trying, sir. And then let's go. The radio room's at the end of this corridor. I think I'll hurry ahead. Best to make sure. Uh, good man. Um, in this message you received, Rogers, which one of them was speaking? Well, the speaker identified himself as Ivan Cromart, sir. Saturn. That's over 880 million miles away. There aren't more than two or three astro navigators who could compute that sort of course with accuracy. No, oh, the young fools. President, I have just heard the news. Is it true? Have they really contacted the Taurus? Yes, in here, Governor Kromatz. Uh, Rocky Star is speaking to them. Hello, Taurus. Taurus. Hello, Taurus. Can you hear me? Please answer. Taurus. Hello. Star, did you speak with them? Did you persuade them to return? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but something seems to have gone wrong with their equipment. We haven't been able to raise them at all. Something wrong? Well, they were still in contact when I got here. Then their transmission stopped suddenly. Their wavelength was quite dead. But what could cause such a thing? You don't think the ship... Were... I'm sure nothing's happened to the ship, Governor. Ah, what do you think has happened, Rocky? Well, it, it's certainly not usual for transmission to blow. Still, with three inexperienced people, well, lots of unusual things could happen. Too many. My son is a very intelligent boy, Mr. Starr. Well, I'm, I'm not criticizing his intelligence. Always you speak as if they were nothing but fools. I'm sorry, Mr. Cromartz, but intelligence is not enough. It is the most important thing. Well, I, I happen to know how much... Intelligence is needed for space travel. I do not like your attitude. It is unsympathetic. Uh, that's unjust, Governor. Don't you think you're perhaps uh, just a little too upset? I am sorry. My son's life is in your hands, Rocky Star. Remember that. Excuse me. I, I will go. Uh, he's upset. I hope he doesn't prove too difficult. Yeah, well, we'll just have to try and make allowances. The best thing you can do is to get back to the streak as soon as possible. Well, not necessarily, sir. If those kids are really heading for Saturn, they've started on a long journey. A day one way or the other in our takeoff won't make very much difference. But the parents will feel much better once they know you've gone after the tourists. Yes, I know, but Mitch will be getting the streak ready as fast as it's humanly possible, and we can't do a thing until the ship's ready. You could have the use of another craft. There's no other as fast as the streak, sir. And speed is what we'll need if we're to overtake those young hotheads. I'm not really being as casual about things as you may think, President, but, well, I have work to do here yet. Work? Yes. Take me along to the nearest computing machine, will you please? I want to start calculating a really accurate course for Saturn. Your radio set is completely dead. But I don't know how it happened. It was when I switched from transmit to receive. Well, perhaps you should have switched off first. Oh, that's it. You pulled too much power into the circuit. Oh, I'll bet you've blown all the valves. Well, we got our message through anyway. They will now be sure we're headed for Saturn. No one will chase us toward Mars. I don't like it, not having any radio transmission. It means we're completely cut off. At least if we'd gotten into trouble, we could have sent out a call for help. We shall have to rely on ourselves, that is all. But we haven't the experience to. Poor. There can be no doubt or fear allowed. We talked about this trip and felt sure we could meet all emergencies. We must continue to believe that. I'm sorry, Ivan. Not myself, I guess. I'm still a bit sick. It's this business of having no gravity. It's almost horrible knowing that no direction is up or down. It will pass, that feeling. There are cabins at the rear. Go and lie down for a while, Ilma. I think I will. Oh, I'm sure I'll never get used to this floating. There are elastic straps across the bunk. Be sure to fasten yourself down with them. Thanks, I will. Perhaps you would like to lie down, Paul? No, I think I'll be better on my feet. Ivan, don't think I'm panicking or anything, but hadn't we better go over the course calculations again? 
You said you were sure all your figures were right. I know, but it's a long way to Mars. Just a small error could land us almost any... What's that? A warning of some kind. Yeah, but what kind? I'm not sure. Check the instrument panel quickly. We should have gotten more familiar with everything before we... Oh, here, Ivan, look. There's a, a light flashing on and off. It's on the panel marked radar. Let me see. That must be radar warning. That would mean something ahead of us. Switch on the telescreen quickly. I am not sure which switch. Oh, not that one. No. Oh, which one? Can... There it is. The screen's lighting up. There's something showing. Asteroid. It's an asteroid coming towards us. It'll crash right into us. What are we... Of course. Change course. Change course, but how? To the right. The right, Ivan. Deflector rockets. Yes, but which firing button? Here. Main rockets, deflectors, TBTL. This looks like the one. But does main rockets refer to that button or this? This one. Press it. You must be sure. Oh, press it, Ivan. Press it. But it may not. Look at the screen. Look, it's almost on us. Keep away, Ilma. Ivan, if you won't press that button, I will. But Paul. For heaven's sake, look at the screen. Ivan! All right, then. Here goes. Lie flat. Down quickly. <laughs> Paul and Ilma grab frantically at the nearest handholds. Ivan stabs fearfully at one of the black buttons on the control panel, holds tightly to his seat and gazes as if hypnotized at the huge image of the asteroid on the screen. From somewhere comes the muffled thunder of rockets firing. But are they the correct ones? What will be the result of this desperate action? There is tense drama ahead, so be sure you hear the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> An adventure with Rocky Star! When three youngsters borrow the spaceship Taurus and leave Earth on a joyride, Rocky is sent for in the utmost urgency. It is believed the runaway ship is heading for distant, unexplored Saturn. And as soon as the streak is overhauled, Rocky is to set out in pursuit. But the Taurus is actually following a course plotted for Mars. And on board, Ilma, Paul and Ivan are very pleased at the way they have fooled people on Earth. But suddenly the radar warns of the approach of a wandering asteroid. Ivan leans over the complicated instrument panel, but can't decide which control will turn the ship. Finally, when collision seems unavoidable, he stabs frantically at a firing button. There is the distant thunder of atomic jets. The Taurus shudders violently, and the three find themselves flattened against the left-hand wall of the control cabin. Ivan! Ivan, what's happening? I'm not sure. Oh, oh sorry. Well, you kicked me right in the stomach. I couldn't help it. What's happening to the ship? I'm waiting for the crash. We can't be wrecked now. We can't. Can you see the telescreen? Yes, yes. That asteroid. It's huge right on us. Oh, no! It's on the light of the screen, slipping sideways. It's gone. Wait for the crash. I can't bear this. Nothing's happened. Then we've moved out of its path. You, you mean we're safe, Paul? That must have been the right button for the deflector rockets, after all. I said it was, Ivan. Look here, through the window. Can you see it, Ivan? Yes. There it goes. Oh, it's huge. We wouldn't have lasted five seconds if we'd crashed into that thing. Yes, strange to see it gliding away like that, without a sound. I, I think I'll sit down. I feel all shaky. Oh, me too. But for the sake of Ike, Ivan, why did you have to wait so long before pushing that firing button? I was trying to make sure if I had fired the main propulsion motors in mistake, it would have been the finish of us. But it was marked clearly enough. It didn't seem clear to me. Oh, don't let's argue about it, boys. We dodged the thing and that's all that's important. Those deflector jets certainly swung us hard. I thought I was going straight through the side. No wonder. There is a lever here for regulating power. It was set for full. Oh, just as well. When you did, when you saw how close that planetoid was, at least we're still on our way to Mars. Yes, it is good. Oh, the course. What's up now, Van? We're not on our way to Mars. We are now traveling an entirely different course. You're right. Well, then we'd better get back on course quick. Let me see. That will mean firing the other deflector rockets to bring us around again. Looks like it's this button here. Low power this time. Hold tight, everyone. 
That's more like it. How far are we off course, Paul? Will it take us long to get back again? Well, it shouldn't. We will swing left until... But wait. There is nothing to judge by out in space. We can surely judge it some way. Oh. Well, I wouldn't know. Well, we could tell by how long we've been traveling on the new course. What time was it when Ivan fired the deflector? I don't know. Nor I. And another thing. How much did we alter course? The astral compass will give us that. But we've altered course again. Oh, what a fool I am. I should have known that before checking the compass. I am sorry. Well, I reckon it's our fault, too. We should have thought of it. It must be the sickness or the weightlessness. I know I feel half dopey. But we can work out where we are, can't we? We don't know how far we altered course and how far we have travelled on the course. What direction we are travelling in, I have no idea. That's what I felt. We haven't the experience. Poor. I'm oh, sorry. Well, let's think. How do spacemen find out where they are? Don't they take a sighting on two stars and work it out from that? Or well, something like old-time sailors. You are best at calculations, Paul. Try it. But... All right. But listen, you two. There's just one thing I want to make clear before I do. Yes? Well, I'm not much more than a beginner at this sort of calculation. I can't guarantee the results. But if you can't do it, that... That means we're, we're lost, Paul. I'm not giving up yet, Elmer. But it's a decided possibility. Instead of heading nicely for Mars... I'd say we're lost in space. Paul takes up a navigating instrument and walks to the observation dome. But far away on the distant blue star that is Earth, there is no suspicion of what has happened aboard the Taurus. At the very instant that Paul is nervously trying to get a fix on two stars... Mitz clambers into the control cabin of the street to find Rocky half buried amongst the complicated control gear. Hey, Rocky boy, how you making out? Everything okay? Uh, so far, Mitch. Might like get my head out of hey, here. Hey, watch out for that steel strike to my bum. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> oh. I always forget that thing. Yeah, I don't. I learned from bitter experience. Oh, hmm. Well, those new blast tubes, how long will it be before they're fitted? Oh, uh, not long. Yeah, but how long? Relax, pal. They should be fixed in a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Check the tail fins. Yep. Radiation yep. shields. Methane tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look, stop worrying, will you, Rocky? You gotta finish up a first-class case of space jitters if you're not <laughs> careful. Just say that again. A first-class <laughs> right, case of it, space yeah. jitters. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, bitch. Oh, but, you know, seriously, when I think of those inexperienced youngsters out there in space... Yeah, I know. Oh, look, don't worry, Rocky. We'll, we'll be after them at least 12 hours ahead of what I thought. Ah, good man. Now, how are we going to find one spaceship in the middle of millions of miles and nothing beats me? Well, our one hope is knowing that they're headed for Saturn. Yeah, that's for sure. At least that gives us a, a general direction. Mm. The electronic boys are fitting a new radar with twice the range of the other one. Yeah, well, look, I, I'd better get back to those blast tubes. Mm -hmm. Sure wish they didn't get so radioactive. Sitting inside a shielded control cabin and doing everything by mechanical donkey. Yeah, well, it, it ain't nearly as fast as... We could just walk up and wrestle with those things properly. Yeah, huh? well, you just stay in that cabin. I don't want you hit by radiation. Well, don't worry, pal. Neither do I. Well, see you later. Yeah, right. Oh, where's Di? Uh, he's getting the load down at Saturn. Mm -hmm. So I'll know what gear we need. Hey, Rocky. Yep? And you better let the president of the Solar Council know those tubes will be right inside two hours. Oh, I still got a lot to do here yet, Mitch. Well, please yourself, pal. He said he wanted to know. Yeah, uh, all right. Okay, I'll see to it. That's my boy. Yeah, red tape reports. Oh, well, they foot the bill, so I suppose they're entitled to know. I'd better get down there now. I'm glad you'll be ready so soon, Rocky. It's quite a relief. Well, at least you'll have some good news for the parents. Yes, when I send them the information, it may stop their frantic radiograms for a while. Uh, but, but see, uh, uh, come along here. There's something I'd like to show you. Well, anything to do with that uh, mystery substance we're supposed to find? Yes, it is. Uh, through here. Mm -hmm. uh, go in. It's a special little dark room. Uh, sit down over there. Thank you. I've brought you here, Rocky, to show you a spectrograph of this... Uh, uh, what was it? Um... Heavy plutonium, I think you said. Heavy plutonium. A742. You know the usual way of finding out what substances are on the various stars and planets. By spectroscope? Yes, as you know, it breaks the light up, 
into a series of different colours, which vary according to the substance reflecting the light. Mm -hmm. Well, here I have a spectrograph of heavy plutonium, A742. Uh, I'll project it onto the screen for you. And uh, this uh, colour pattern is what we'll be looking for? Yes. You'll take a spectroscope with you and analyse the light from planets and stars that we can see only dimly on Earth. Uh, just one moment while I switch the lights off. Uh, switch on the projector, will you? There. On the screen, you see the spectrum pattern you must look for. But I warn you, Rocky, it's an exceedingly rare one. Hmm. Then it may take years to find. All I can say is that I earnestly hope not. Look, just what is behind this, Mr. President? Is it important? Very important. May I ask why? Rocky, I know this will sound strange, especially when we're relying on you to find this, this thing for us. But I am simply not allowed to tell you. Not allowed? This is a matter that has only been discussed by the Supreme Committee of the Solar Council. That means only five men in the world know about it. It's something of such tremendous importance for mankind, but it was decided that for the moment no one, not even you, must know why we want A742. Well, sir, the Solar Council doesn't usually mistrust me. They don't now. But this is number one security in the world today. Something that must not leak out. So it remains secret even from you. And if we can't locate it for you? You must locate it, Rocky. No matter what happens, it must be found. This much at least I can tell you. If you fail in what we're asking, sometime during the next 20 years, mankind will face the greatest cataclysm it has ever known. A catastrophe so great, it could mean the end of the human race. Rocky swings in his seat toward the quiet voice speaking from the darkness. He sees the president's face lit by a stray beam of light from the projector, and it is deadly serious. Uneasily, Rocky looks again at the bands of color on the screen. Can they really represent the safety of all mankind? And where can the precious element be found? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with... Rocky Star! Rocky and Mitch are hastily preparing the streak for an urgent journey into space. They are to try to find three youngsters who have borrowed a spaceship and have horrified the authorities by radioing back their intention of trying to reach far distant Saturn. But there is also a secret side to the mission. Rocky has shown the spectrum of a certain type of heavy plutonium which must be found somewhere in the universe. Failure may mean destruction of the human race. While Rocky studies the spectrum pattern on the screen of a dark room, Mitch is supervising the fitting of new blast tubes to the streak. Seated in the cabin of a robot servicing donkey, he gives instructions to the man at the control. Right, grass, we've got a good grip on that tube. Now switch over to hall and pull it clear. Right! Yeah, I wish they could find some way of preventing those tubes from getting so radioactive. Yes, it makes things awkward not being able to get near them to service them. Sure thing, Pat. This gadget's a mighty clever piece of work the way it does things, but giggling grasshopper sitting in a shielded cabin and using mechanical arms and stuff. Isn't as easy as walking right up to a thing and getting the grips with it, huh? Yes, I know. Hey, this tube's coming clear. She's clear. Swing it across over to the right with the others. Right out. Let her go. Ah, looks okay. Only one more to go now. I'll swing her back. Now be sure and get a good grip of those mechanical grabs, Pat. If I remember right, this one was tight to get in. That's it. You've got a good grip on it. Right out. Put the strain on. 
It's not moving. I know the crummy thing was going to give us trouble. You on full power? Yes. Looks like I'll have to get another donkey to lend a hand. Keep the strain on that uh, cable while I go and get one, huh? Right. If Mitchy gets out the left-hand door of the cab, you'll be close enough to pick up radiation on the right. Yeah, I'll do that. I get X-24. It's not been used. It's over beyond the stick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, look at that cable. Full strain and not a move out of the thing. Wood stick just when we were just... <laughs> look out, Mitch. It's coming here. Giggling grasshoppers. Swing it toward you. Run, Mitch. That hunk of metal hits. I haven't a hope. Feverishly, the man in the control cabin works to drag the tube of deadly radioactive metal away from Mitch. The machinery whirs, the tube swings into the air and sweeps slowly away to a safe distance. But when it is gone, there is still the form of Mitch, lying in a crumpled heap. Rocky is leaving the dark room with the president when the news is brought to him by Di. He excuses himself at once and hurries to the hospital. On the way, he asks anxious questions. The blast tube actually knocked him over, Di. Then he must have got a big dose of radiation. Yes. Oh, oh poor Mitch. How did it happen? Well, the tube came away suddenly. Mm-hmm. When they thought it was stuck, it swung towards him on the end of the cable. He oh. ran, but it knocked him over. The donkey man dragged it away as fast as he could. Oh, it sounds grim. He is in the accident ward here? Yes. All right, come on then. Which, which doctor is looking after there him? There he is. He's just coming out of that room. Oh. Uh, doctor! Uh, doctor, my friend Mitch, H- how is he? Well, I'm afraid he received a very strong exposure to radiation from that blast tube. Almost strong enough to be lethal. Doctor, you don't mean that Mitch is going to die? Well, we'll do everything we can to save him, but please don't hope for too much. The chances of surviving radiation such as he experienced are very small indeed. Di and Rocky look at each other in deep concern. Their feelings are matched by the worry of three youngsters far out in space who are trying to find out just where their borrowed spaceship is taking them. Well, Paul... What answer do you get to your calculations? I can't understand it. Aren't we back somewhere near our original course? We should be, Elmer. But according to the calculations, we will come nowhere near Mars. Surely we can't be completely out of reach of I must have made a mistake when I worked out the original course. Neither that or we set it wrongly before blast-off. Then where are we going, Paul? Wait, Elmer, before we discuss that, surely it must be possible to change our course for Mars? I can't figure it. Everything has to be worked out with how far the planet's traveling and where it will be at a certain time. Yes, that was fairly easy to do. But up here with nothing but space all around, I'm completely lost. Then where are we headed, Paul? I want to know. Well, from the fix I managed to get and the calculations I've made, it seems the only planet we're likely to come anywhere near is... is Saturn. Saturn? I've checked and checked the figures, and I'm sure that's right. (laughs) There's a joke. We fooled them on Earth into thinking that we were going to Saturn so they wouldn't follow us to Mars. And that's the very place we're heading. Everything's so mixed up. I'm scared. No good getting scared, Elmer. We've got to keep our heads. Well, I've worked our position out as best I can. What do you want to do about it? You're setting so far. Couldn't we change course again and maybe try and turn back? Perhaps that would be best. Oh, I don't know so much. I have to do all the calculating. And I tell you, I just can't rely on the things out here in space. If we keep changing course, there's no knowing where we'll finish up. We can't keep on traveling away from the Earth millions of miles to Saturn. Your figures may even be wrong there. We may not be heading that way at all. No, Ivan. That's one thing I'm sure of. If we can't make Mars, perhaps we could head for one of the other planets. Venus, for instance. That's all too risky. I don't know enough about computing space courses. Look, the one thing people on Earth know about us is that we said we were heading for Saturn. All right, now we are heading that way. Surely it's best to keep on as we are. At least there'll be a chance of being found if they send out a search ship from Earth. Mm, That sounds sensible. Put it to the vote. What do you say, Elmer? I say, thank goodness we left that false message about going to Saturn. Don't let's do anything that may get us lost. Wandering around through space for years and years until we die. Don't think of it. Well, then we go on as we are, headed towards Saturn. Yes. Wait, I will see if I can find it in the telescope reflector. Somewhere straight ahead it should be, Paul. Yeah. Mm, focus. 
That is better. Now swing across. Y- yes, I see it. That at least is one planet there's no mistake in. Well, let me look. Oh, it's beautiful with all those rings around it. And it's still small and far away. I think it looks distant and cold and, and frightening. Nearly 900 million miles from Earth. 900 million? Oh, all oh, this doesn't seem such fun as it did at first. I do hope they're sending a ship from Earth after us. But back on Earth, preparations are halted by tragedy. Rocky and I are standing by a hospital bed and looking on the still form of Mitch. Oh, Rocky. He hasn't moved once. And he looks so ill. Yes. Oh, I don't know, Di. I just can't believe a thing like this could happen to Mitch. To think he's lying here, swinging between life and death. Rocky, let's leave for a while. I just can't bear standing and watching him. All right, Di. Oh, surely they can do something. Something more than they are. We mustn't give way, Rocky. We must try and keep calm. Calm? That's Mitch in there, Di. He's travelled millions of miles of space with us. He's laughed with us. He's fought with us and fought by us and... How can I keep calm? I know how you feel, Rocky. I feel the same way. But the doctor promised they'd do everything they could to save him. Yes, I... I'm sorry, Di. Oh, come on, let's get out of this place for a while. I never did like hospitals. Ah, sun and fresh air. Ah, That's a bit better. Although the sun doesn't seem right. Knowing Mitch. Rocky, who's this man coming? Do you hmm? know him? Oh, it, it's Cromart. Wilhelm Cromart, governor of the Federated States of Europe. His son was one of the three who took that spaceship. Rocky it, Star! The Solar Council tells me the streak is going to be ready for blast off much earlier than you hoped. I am so happy to hear it. Oh, uh, this is your assistant? The scientist. Wilhelm Cromart, die. How do, uh, how how do, do you do? do? The uh, blast tube should be nearly replaced by now, Mr. Cromart. Good, good. Then you will take off then, in an hour or two? Well, I, I'm sorry, but I can't say... You can't ta- say? What talk is this? If the ship is ready, naturally you will go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but there may be a delay. Delay? I... Why should there be a delay? I demand that you take off as soon as possible. At the very first moment, I demand it. I don't think demand is the best word to use, Mr. Cromart. Uh, Rocky should have explained, Mr. Cromart. The other member of our crew, a very close friend, is in hospital here with radiation sickness. I am sorry. But surely crew members can be replaced. I will see the president of the council about it. I will say you are to leave in two to three hours. I'm sorry, Mr. Cromart, but I'd be glad if you'd leave it for a while. Give us till tomorrow. Tomorrow? With my son lost somewhere out there in space? Have you no feelings, Star? Yes, sir, I have feelings. I don't believe it. You were given this job by the highest authority, and I demand that you leave at once. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't leave until I know what's going to happen to Mitch. On behalf of Rankin, Steiberg, and myself, I demand you get a substitute and leave at once. I'm sorry, but the answer is no. You seem to forget who you are talking to, Rocky Star. Will you do as I ask? Very well. We are not without power in this world. I swear, if you do not leave as I ask, we shall use all our influence to have you grounded. You will never fly a spaceship again. For the last time, will you take off at once? Rocky looks at the angry, unhappy man and remains silent. Cromart glares at him a moment. Then, without another word, hurries toward the communications office to set his threat into action. Rocky frowns. He knows Cromart could well carry out his threat. But he cannot desert Mitch now. He looks back to the hospital. Will his friend really die? There are unexpected developments ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure. Lost in Space! In space, space. an adventure adventure with with Rocky Rocky Star.
The situation has worsened since it was first discovered that three youngsters had borrowed a spaceship and gone off on their own. Departure of the streak is being delayed by an accident. Struck by one of the streak's blast tubes, Mitch is in hospital in danger of death from radiation sickness. Rocky decides he can't possibly leave in search of the Taurus until he knows what's going to happen to his friend. Upset by worry over his son and the lost Taurus, Wilhelm Kromartz threatens to use his influence to have Rocky grounded permanently. Well, there he goes to the communication office, Di. In a few minutes, there'll be messages going out to all his influential friends. Rocky, if they bring enough pressure to bear, you really will be grounded. Well, I couldn't go off without knowing whether Mitch is going to live or die. No, I wouldn't expect you to. Perhaps no one will take any notice of him. Who else could go in search of the Taurus? Well, there are other good spacemen, Di. Yes, but none of them have ever been held in such high regard by the Solar Council as you, Rocky. Well, maybe someone will after this. Anyway, never mind about me. It's it's Mitch that I'm worried about. If Cromarts has realized how worried we are, perhaps he wouldn't be so unreasonable. Oh, poor Mitch. Di, you're a scientist. Now think. Think carefully over all the latest experiments with gamma rays. Is there any recent development that, that might counteract radiation? Rocky, there was a paper recently. Mm -hmm. Yes, Poulsen it was. Something about synthetic powder and deep ultraviolet rays. W was it any good? Well, he claimed it was, but there hadn't been enough experiments for complete proof. Oh, never mind about that. Come on, I'm going to find that doctor. Yes, I read the paper, Rocky. But as Di says, it hasn't been proved. There could be a great danger of killing the patient. Doctor, I, I know how cautious you medical people are, but from what Di's told me, it's a treatment that could perhaps succeed. Isn't that true? Well, there are possibilities. Well, then please use it on Mitch. Perhaps they haven't the powder here. Yes, we have a small amount. It's used for other purposes, but I don't like to take the responsibility of trying something that... Still isn't proved a cure. Well, then I'll take the responsibility on Mitch's behalf, Doctor. I'm sure he'd be glad to try the treatment, wouldn't he, Di? He certainly would. He'd say, giggling grasshoppers, get on with it, Doc, and give a man a chance. Oh, Doctor, please try. Well, I don't know. He's so near to death. I don't suppose the risk will be very much greater. All right. Come with me. We'll see what can be done. powder has been dissolved in water. I have to inject it in his arms. Syringe, nurse. No cure. Oh, Rocky. He's so still. It's almost as if he's dead already. Oh, this has just got to work. There, that's done. Take the instruments away, will you, nurse? Come on, now, Rocky. Help me wheel the ray machine a little closer to the beard. It's very kind of you to let us see this done, Doctor. And it's not usual. I know how much you three mean to each other. Right, thank you. Bo, just the ray over the bed, will you? Yeah, that should be right. Now. Now, the theory is the dissolved powder circulates right through his body, and the ray reacts on it and counteracts the effects of his exposure to radiation. I see. But you see, if the reaction's too strong, you'll kill him. We'd better watch him carefully. He still looks as if he's dead. Yes, I'm tall. I think he moved. I didn't notice anything. But how long does it take? It it's terrible waiting. I just don't know. Oh, there, Doctor. There, he moved. Uh, no doubt this time he's uh, moving violently. Uh, Rocky, my midget tail fans. I'll twist it in the bag. The doctor is thrashing uh, around violently. Turn it be strong reaction. Uh, help hold him down. Fine, right, Doctor. All right, Gorga. Uh, I can down, swim now. better than... It's burning! It's burning! Ah! Oh, easy, Midge, easy. Easy, boy. Doctor? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Rocky. I just don't know. Uh, it's boiling water. All right, I'm not boiling. Oh, Rocky, I can't stand it. I'm not boiling. 
<laughs> breeze. Nice cool breeze. Oh, that's lovely. He's coming down now. Mitch. Mitch, old pal, are you all right? Uh, floating on the wind. So easy. Getting out of work. Eh, uh, work. Uh, mm. His eyes are open. They're not focused yet. Hey, Mitch. Mitch, don't. <laughs> Hi, Rocky boy. What's wrong? Rocky, he knows you. Yeah, that's oh, me, Mitch. Mitch. What, 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 what's a, a gizmo you got there buzzing at me? Doctor, he's all right. Yes. Yes, it seems the experiment's a success. We can turn the ray off now. Say, what, what goes on? What's all the fuss about, anyway? Oh, well, you, you've had bad radiation exposure, Mitch. It's been a close call. Oh, yeah, I remember the blast tube. I feel fine, wonderful. Say, this isn't heaven or something, is it? I'm not dead. No, my friend, I'm very relieved to say that you're very much alive. In fact, judging by your reactions, it appears you're almost completely back to normal. Oh, that's certainly a relief to me. To you? And what do you think I'm feeling? Relief? <laughs> now, let me out of bed. No, not yet, Mitch. An hour or two's rest, and then I'll give you a check just to make sure. Uh, Doc, don't give me this bad routine. I feel fine. Doctor's orders, Mitch. Yeah, but now I gotta... never mind trying to get up, Mitch. You stay just where you are. Uh, yeah, maybe I will look there. <laughs> the old noggin swimming like a bowl of fish. All right, I'll take a rest. Don't worry. Your friends can see you in a couple of hours. You promise? Mm-hmm. Promise. Come on, Rocky. Die. We'll leave him for a while. Yes. Well, see you later, Mitch. All right, but don't you forget... Well, the experiment was a success. Quite a relief for me, I can tell you. Thank you for trying it, Doctor. We can't say how much it means to us. That's all right. Well, better get on with my work. See you two later. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks, Doctor. Bye-bye. Oh, Di, that, that the treatment was terrific. Almost miraculous. Thank goodness you thought of it. Oh, thank goodness it worked. But what now, Rocky? Well, I think I'll try and find Chromats and put things right there. I have a feeling he'll forget about his threats when I tell him that we'll probably be right for blast off in an hour or two. But every hour is taking the Taurus further and further from Earth. In her control cabin, Ilma, Paul, and Ivan stand by the instrument panel and once again try to decide whether they're doing the right thing. I tell you, we'd be fools to all the course again. I didn't like sea navigation where you're bound to strike land sooner or later. But what good can it do us, Paul, traveling further and further away? All the time we are leaving help behind us. I feel that way too, Paul. What good can you hope to gain from changing course again? Well, perhaps we may come to a planet nearer Earth. It's not so easy, Elmer. Think back of what you learned of the universe when you were studying astronomy. It's mostly huge stretches of empty space. The planets are like grains of sand. Single grains, miles apart. How can we rely on blindly hitting a planet under those conditions? I don't think we should try and get somewhere blindly. But if we turn back towards Earth, we'll have a much better chance of being found. You talk about turning back towards Earth as if it was easy. How do you propose to do it? We just have to turn round, wouldn't we? Of course, then pick up Earth and set out a course for it. How are you going to pick out Earth? Do you know what it looks like from this part of the universe? I am not a fool, Paul. Of course I know what Earth looks like. If you believe it's that easy, then all I can say is you are a fool. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm trying to get some sense into your thick head. Don't you talk to me like that. <coughs> Ivan, you... Ivan, you knocked him right across the control cabin. Paul, I'm sorry. I did not mean... I forgot there was no gravity. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Okay, but don't do it again. Oh, I sure hit this bulkhead with a thud. We simply must not quarrel like this. We're in a bad enough spot as it is without quarreling. You are right, Ilma. Paul... Why do you say I could not find Earth if we turn around? Come to the observation dome and I'll show you. Now, that's where we've come from. You just tell me which one of all those stars is the Earth. Well, I... Uh, let me see. Well, it would be... I see what you mean, Paul. You can't tell which one? Have a look for yourself. You see, Ivan? It's pretty easy on Earth to pick out which is Mars and Venus and so on. Because the sky always looks the same, and we know where we are. 
We've never looked at things from this angle before. Yes, you are right. If we turn back, we will be more hopelessly lost than ever. Paul is right, Ilma. Then we just have to go on and on until we get to Saturn. But what then? At least they know on Earth that we're heading this way. It's our best chance of being picked up. There's the radar alarm again. Oh, no. What is it this time, I wonder? Paul, Yvonne, I can see it. Look over there. It's a spaceship. A spaceship. Where, Elma? A ship, then we're found. Where is it? Elma, where? Oh, I see it. Look, Yvonne, there. Yes, yes, I see it. But, Paul, we're overtaking her. I wonder what ship she is. Can you see the name? There is something on the side. Hand me the glass. Here. Now, P... E. G. Pegasus. What? Pegasus, are you sure? Oh, yes, that's what it says. Why? The Pegasus went out nearly a hundred years ago and has never been heard of since. That's a derelict out there, a ghost spaceship. <laughs> The three stand gazing at the meteor-battered hulk of the long-lost spaceship. And as they look, each wonders whether in another hundred years, their craft too will be floating endlessly through space. Can the streak possibly overtake and find them? And what strange adventures lie ahead before it does so? There's a tremendous store of peril and action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> In space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Ilma, Paul, and Ivan are finding their space joyride has lost its carefree thrill. When they fail completely to recognize Earth from among the teeming myriads of stars behind them, they know that any attempt at turning back would leave them more hopelessly lost than ever. All they can do is remain on their known course. So now, with controls untouched, the Taurus plunges ever further away from the planet that is their home. But suddenly the radar warning sounds and they sight a spaceship nearby. But all hope of rescue fades when the name on its side proves it to be a craft that was lost almost a hundred years before. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the streak is at last ready for departure. Rocky, Mitch and I walk from their car to where she waits on the launching slab. Ah, good old streak, man. It's good to see her, even though she did nearly write me off. You're sure you're all right, Mitch? Well, quit worrying, will you, die? Well, I only I know, to... I know, and I appreciate that, but you're spoiling my big moment. Yo, big moment? When I see the streak standing waiting like that, her nose pointing up towards space. Ah, it always does something to me. <laughs> oh, I remember the first time. I gave you the nervous horrors. Yeah, but, well, uh, <laughs> that was the first time, but, uh, but now... Yeah, listen, we've uh, wasted enough time already, Mitch. You climb straight through that hatch and get into your seat ready for blast-off. Okay, it's a fine way to talk to a sick man, I must say. Convalescence is over, Mitch. Oh, you ain't kidding. <laughs> All right, up you go, Di. Oh, I'm so glad Cromart's apologized for his threats to you, Rocky. Yes, yeah, so am I. Oh, it, it was just worry over his son that was the trouble. Well, we must bring those crazy kids back safely. Yes, if we can. Well, this is it. Check seat. Mm-hmm, okay. Close airlock. Airlock closed. Check course alignment. Course set, Okay. Mitch, power unit okay? All dials checked, Rocky boy. Right, stand by. Standing by. Saturn, here we come! The streak trembles, rises slowly above the white-hot glare of her atomic jets. Then rapidly she is accelerating and the Earth is dropping away and away. But as she hurtles in a thundering curve upward through Earth's atmosphere... Far out in space, a bold decision is being made. Yes, it is the Pegasus, all right. I will slacken our speed so we move along together. A touch of the forward rocket should do it. Be prepared. Everyone all right? Well, thank goodness I had a tight grip or I'd have gone through the observation window. We don't seem to be passing it now. Let me see. Yes, we're drifting side by side. Oh, doesn't it give you an awful feeling to look at her? 
To think she's been drifting around in space like that all that time. Uh, excuse me, Ilma. I want to get at this locker. Thanks. Hey, that's where the spacesuits are kept. What are you going to do, Ivan? Have a look at that ship. You coming? But how will we get aboard? Didn't you notice her hatch? It's been half torn down by a meteor or something. Do you think we really should? Why not? We're out here to see all we can. Think of solving the Pegasus mystery. Besides, we may find valves for our radio. Well, that's an idea. Hang on till I get into one of these suits. And I'll come too. <laughs> Good girl. I'm going down to the airlock. When you are both ready, join me there. Set you two? Yes, yep. Ivan. When we put the helmets on, we'll have to use intercom radio to talk. The control switch is on the helmet there. There's no air pressure out there in space. We'll need to inflate these suits, won't we? Yes. The dial just inside the helmet shows the right pressure. Regulate it with the valve. Right on with the helmets. Then I'll work the airlock door control. All right, you two? Yes, okay. Ivan, okay. Then here goes. Ivan, I'm scared. No need to be. Use your booster jets and you'll float out into space. Gently, though. How do you know all this is right, Ivan? I did a trip to the moon once, remember? Come on. Ivan! Ivan! She's shooting away. She's used too much power. I'll get her. Ivan, help! I'm coming. Here, grab my hands. How do we get back? How do we get back? Relax. Now, oh. hang on. I'll use the jets to get us back. Hang on. There. See? Gentle does it. We're going back. Okay, Ilma. Oh, it was such an awful feeling. Drifting away like that and nothing all around me. Nothing. Let's get him out of the ships quickly. You got a good grip on the edge of the Pegasus hatch, Paul? Yeah. I'm going to blast us across to you. Catch us as we drift by. Right. Here we come. Ready? Right. Easy. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, nothing to it. You get in through the hole and we'll follow. It's a tight squeeze. Careful your oxy cylinders don't catch. Well, right. Okay, Ilma. Yes, thanks. Funny-looking craft, isn't she? They've learned a lot in the last hundred years. To think we're the first people who've stood on this deck in all that time. Now, well, don't you start getting spooky on us. Come on, let's explore. There's no telling what we will find on a ship as old as this. Come on. As the three space-suited figures drift cautiously along the central corridor of the old spaceship, far away the streak has left Earth's atmosphere. While Mitch makes a routine check of all dials, Rocky and I are sitting gazing at patterned lines of colors on a little screen. Rocky switches on the lights. Well, that's it, Di. Now you know what the spectrograph of heavy uranium A742 looks like. I wonder why the Solar Council consider it so important. Well, your guess is as good as mine. They wanted to stop a catastrophe that could wipe out the human race. Couldn't it be needed to fight an epidemic of disease, could it? Oh, it could be. Though I'd have said its best use would be as a superatomic fuel, but mm -hmm. then we neither of us know much about it. <laughs> uh, one thing's certain, it isn't going to be easy to find from what's been said. Looks as if I'm going to be pretty busy with that spectroscope. And we'll be just as busy on radar trying to find the Taurus. I don't like to say this, Rocky, but... Oh, we're out of space and no one else can hear us, so... Well, it, it seems pretty hopeless, doesn't it, oh, Rocky? Oh, we just can't think that, or we won't try hard enough. I've got the streak on full speed. She's faster than the Taurus, so we have a good chance of overtaking them. Yes, but if they're not on the same course... Oh, I, I don't know yet, I, I don't know. But we can't leave them to wander in space and just... What, <coughs> what on earth? Die! Die, are you all right? Yes, I, I think so. Oh, what happened? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. The warning bell. Yes, damage to the hull. Something must have hit us. Yes. The warning lights over the control panel. Air loss, heat loss, safety bulkhead. Now they're all on. Hey, Rocky, die. You okay? Rocky. Yes, Mitch. Here. Giggling grasshoppers. I thought we really had it. What was it, a meteorite? Yes, probably. Wait till I check the course. Rocky, the damage. Yes. You'd better have a look, Mitch. I must check our course in case we've been deflected. Yeah, there's no sense in us getting lost. All right, I'll grab a spacesuit and have a look-see. Good. You better hope for the best, you two, because me, I'm fearing the worst. It's just as well you check 
course, Rocky. Yes. Course is adjusted now, Di. Hey. Hey. Hey, the airlock light just came on. Come on, let's go down and meet Mitch. Oh, we would collect a meteorite at this stage. Yeah. Everything seems to be against us in this job, Rocky. Oh, well, don't worry, Di. We've battled through worse than this before. We'll get through okay. Well, the uh, airlock's closed from this side. Yeah, so I noticed. Hey, red light's on, though. Mitch must be in there now. Ah, there goes the pressure. Yes, he's opening up. Hey, Mitch, I'll give you a handoff with your helmet. Uh, <coughs> oh. Oh, thanks, chicken. Well, Mitch... Tell us the news. Well, it's, uh, it's not so good, Rocky. Hey, eh? I'd say we was luckier than the Christmas turkeys to get away. Well, tell us, what's the extent of the damage? Well, it was a nice big meteorite, see? But it went right through us, just fired of the atomic motors. The motors? The... Hey, if they were hit... Yeah, the... I know. Now, relax, relax. Don't go blowing your top. They uh, weren't hit. Oh. They're all right. Oh, that's one good thing anyway. Bulkhead slide over the holes? Yeah. But the, the hole's so weak that if we change course or, or land and atmosphere, it'll, uh, it, it won't take the strain. Wow. Well, I... Well, we'll just have to try and repair it. Now you're on a ball, kid. That's for sure. Believe your Uncle Mitch. If we can fix it out here in space, we'll never get home to Earth again. <laughs> Mitch makes his statement, and Rocky's jaw clenches as he moves toward the streak's workshop. Little does he know the danger that will attend their attempt at repairs on the badly damaged hull. There is peril and action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> An adventure with Rocky Star! At last, the streak has left Earth in search of the Taurus and its three joyriders. The search promises to be very difficult, but it's a satisfaction to Rocky knowing that they're on their way. This satisfaction is short-lived. Suddenly there is a rending crash as a meteorite strikes the street. When Mitch puts on a spacesuit and investigates, he comes back with the news that the hull has been seriously weakened. Yeah, I'll pass right through the hole, Rocky. Uh, but the bulkhead slide over the hull's all right. Sure, but the hull looks so weakened. She, she'd never take the strain of changing course or, or landing in an atmosphere. Rocky, that sounds really serious. It certainly does. We'll have to repair it out here in space. Yeah, well, if we don't, none of us will see home and mummy again. All right, then let's do something about it. Mitch, in the workshop store, there are sheets of hull metal. Yeah. You and I get them here to the airlock. Mm -hmm. I'll get a couple of space suits for Di and myself. Right, Rocky boy. What are you going to use, Rocky? Heat rays? Well, we'll take the sheets of metal out through the airlock, and get them in place over the damaged part of the hull, then weld them into place with heat ray guns. And weld a couple of ribs underneath for extra strength, huh? Mm-hmm, right. It's going to be tricky work. But if we're careful, we should manage. Rocky, we just got to manage. All right, Mitch. Let's get started. I'll see you both back here. Hurrying to the control deck, Rocky reduces streak speed. Then, dragging spacesuits out of a locker, prepares to work on his ship. Meanwhile, far out towards Saturn, other spacesuited figures are active. In the heart of the long-lost derelict, the Pegasus, Ilma, Paul, and Ivan drift along in cautious exploration. Suddenly, as the passageway takes a slight turn, Paul's voice comes excitedly over the intercom. There's a flight of steps here. Look, perhaps they lead upward to the control cabin. It all feels so eerie, like being in a tomb. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, do we go up? May as well. I will lead. Ilma next. You follow, right? <laughs> oh, this gives me the creeps. We're climbing a steel ladder, but there's no sound. Well, there's no air in here to carry sound. I am at the top. Give me your hand. Uh, oh, thanks, Ivan. What's up there? It seems to lead to the control deck. Come on. Oh, look! The man! 
There's a man. Where? In that alcove, in the space suit, sitting at the desk. She's right. Come over and look. Oh, no. No, I'm scared. Nothing to be scared of, Ilma. He has not been alive for a long time. He must have been the navigator. See? Sky charts and calculations. It is a strange feeling to see. He has sat here this way for a hundred years, with his last calculation still before him. Makes you feel weird, doesn't it? I feel I could shake him and say, wake up. Oh, don't touch him, Paul. Oh, he fell over. The spacesuit's just crumpled up. Oh, Paul. Nothing but dust. It is all you could expect after such a long time. Yeah. It, it sort of makes you wonder about us, doesn't it? Enough of that, Paul. Come to the control deck. Oh, come on, Elma. Cheer up. Don't let what I said worry you. I always did look on the gloomy side. Not that. It was so awful. Seeing yeah, it. I know. The controls are here. And this is a radio panel. Oh, good. We might get some valves. There are also two more men. We will not touch them. No. Say, notice their shoes? They're not like ours at all. Soles are stitched on, see? What material is it? It, it would be leather, I think. It was made from animal skins, wasn't it? I think so. Couldn't they make good plastic boots like ours? It seems not. They're clumsy, aren't they? And think of all the work, stitching it all together instead of just molding it. Come over here. I have removed the cover from the radio panel. Are there any valves there? Dozens of them. Let's see. Great, Ike, they certainly used plenty. Their radios couldn't have been very efficient either. Are there any we could use? Doesn't look like it. Oh, they're all so terribly clumsy and old-fashioned. And yet when it left Earth, this ship must have been the most modern thing they had. Yeah. do oh, pity. I was relying very much on getting valves so our radio could work. Can we go back now to our ship? Seen enough? Oh, yes. Oh, wait. There is a book here, see? Oh, looks like a logbook. Open at the last entry, too. Let me see. Oh, what funny old-fashioned writing. Astro compass failed. We'll try to estimate position. Air still good, but food nearly uh, exhausted. Very short of air, not long now. We had better take this with us. Sounds like a grim story. Yes. Well, come on. Paul, Ivan, we won't end like this, will we? Well, steady, honey. We've got far better equipment, remember? And Earth knows we're heading for Saturn. Someone will come to find us. What if no one comes? Well, they will come. They will find well, us. Well, they've got to find us. What are we so unhappy for? We have good equipment, food for two years. We are going to be the first people to reach Saturn. And let's get out of this primitive wreck and get back to a good spaceship. Oh, it's good to be back on the Taurus again and out of those spacesuits. I will read this logbook. I may learn from it the sort of dangers we should watch for. Ivan, let's face up to the facts. There's no point in kidding ourselves. What we just saw in that derelict makes it clear that our chances are pretty poor now, doesn't it? No. I think we were fools to go off as we did, knowing so little about things. I just can't imagine now how we ever thought ourselves so... Well, so infallible. You know, with no one but ourselves to blame. Now, listen, you two. You want to face up to things, all right. And face up to some straight talk. There's got to be an end to all this defeated way of looking at things. Now, look, Ivan, can't you stop trying to throw your weight around all the time? I'm not trying to throw my weight around. Well, it seems mighty like it. Oh, please, boys, don't fight him. I am not going to fight. All I want is to stop us giving up before we are beaten. What you want is the... Please, Paul, will you listen to me? Okay, go ahead. First, I want to say I know that that old spaceship was not a pleasant sight. I felt it as much as you. But that is no reason to feel we will end the same way. We know we have enough food for two years aboard... If we are careful, perhaps longer. The air-making equipment is simple and foolproof, so we will not run out of air. Also, there is a very good chance we are being followed. Are these things true or not? Well, yeah, they're true enough. Then why should we speak as if we are finished? But Ivan is a meteor hit. We so. must chance those things. We left Earth because we wanted adventure, didn't we? All right. Are we going to complain because we are getting more adventure than we expected? We are privileged. We have a modern spaceship. We are the first people who will reach Saturn. Then let us make the most of these things and enjoy them. You're right, Ivan. We've been acting like babies. I'm sorry. And you, Paul? I guess what you say makes sense, Ivan. All right, it's a deal. We look for adventure and no complaints. <laughs> let us give our hands on it. There. I feel better already. So do I. How about increasing speed again? Right. 
It's full speed for Saturn and the unknown. While the Taurus leaps forward to the unleashed fury of her atomic jets, far away the streak undergoes emergency repairs. Linked to her hull by safety lines and walking on it with magnetic shoes, Rocky and Mitch work feverishly with their heat rays, welding new plates into place. Well, that's got the main pieces tacked into place, Mitch. Yeah. Should be able to start welding now. Up at the top end? Yeah, best take the two opposite corners out of one buckle. All right, come on. Ah. Uh. Great, these magnetic shoes, aren't they? Yeah, it's a pity the other pair burnt out. Di must be finding it difficult without them. Yeah. Wonder how she's making out, huh? Around the other side there. Hmm. What about giving her a buzz on the intercom? Hmm. That's an idea. Hey, Di. Yes? How are you making out around there, chicken? Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Is it welding okay, Di? Yes, Rocky. I think I might be... Ah! Something's happened. Di, Di, you all right? Hey, Di, she's not answering. Di, come in, will you? Rocky, Mitch, I need help. Di, what is it? I don't know how it happened, but my spare oxygen cylinder exploded. It blasted me right away from the ship. What about your safety line? It snapped. Well, do something quickly, Rocky. I'm traveling further away all the time. Don't let me get out of sight. Hello, Di. Di, Di, I can hardly hear you. Hello, Di. What's happening? Intercom must be damaged. I'll try... The radio's gone dead. Yeah. Quick, Mitch. Up to the top of the hull and get a sight on her. There she is, Rocky. Oh, boy. That far away already. We'll have to get after her in the street. Well, the hull wouldn't stand the strain. Changing course, you, you'd tear it in two. Yes, I know it, Mitch. We've got to do something, and quickly. If we let her drift out of sight, we may never find her again. For a moment, the two men stand hopelessly, watching Di grow smaller and smaller as she drifts rapidly away into space. Suddenly, Rocky turns and makes for the pressure hatch. But with the streak out of action, what can he do? There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. The streak has been seriously weakened by a stray meteorite that passed right through her hull. So while the Taurus streaks far ahead of them for distant Saturn, Rocky, Di, and Mitch have had to reduce speed and clamber out on the hull to make repairs. As they work, there is a sudden explosion. Through the intercom, Di reports that one of her oxy-cylinders has burst and blown her away into space. Then the radio goes dead. Hurrying to the airlock, Rocky makes his way inside the ship. Mitch follows and finds him on the control deck, swinging the direction aerial of the busy screen. What are you doing, Rocky? Before long, she'll be out of sight, Mitch. I'm going to get a bearing on the screen. Well, you're not going to try and follow her in the streak. Well, not if you say the vibration from the deflector blast had split it in two. But it would, Rocky. But are you sure? Oh, giggling grasshoppers. You think I wouldn't take a chance with the old crate for die's sake if I thought it'd help her? Ah, oh, there she is. I've got her on the screen. Poor kid. Hey, couldn't we blast after her with ray guns or something? Bearing 193. 193, I'll note that. No, no, she's too far, Mitch. You'd reach her, but it'd take so much power getting that far, there wouldn't be enough left to blast you back. We better get that repair done, but fast. Yes. This has given me a bearing that we can follow to find her. Come on, Mitch. I've got to work faster than we ever have before. Hurrying to the airlock, the space-suited men frantically work the mechanism and let themselves out into space again. Booster jets propel them to the damaged section of the hull, and they're clinging like flies with magnetic shoes, searing with the heat rays, welding, frantically welding. Uh, 
How's it going on your edge, Mitch? Fair enough, Rocky. The heat's buckling the plating. Ah, uh, we've got no time for fancy workmanship now. No, belt it down. Okay. <clears throat> That poor kid, when I think of her floating way out in the nothing like that... Well, then don't think. Just keep working. I am working. You don't think I'd stop the talk when Di needs help, do you? Not knowing whether we'll find her. Come on, Weld, you useless hunk of tin can. Weld! Hey, I wonder how much oxygen that she's got left. Oxygen? Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. You don't think she'd be out of oxygen, do you? Well, it depends on how much was left in the tank that, that didn't explode. But she's got to have oxygen. I couldn't be in a spot like that. Well, you son of a sardine can, well! Working feverishly, the heat searing from the pistols in their gloved hands, Rocky and Mitch strain to get the job done. Slowly, the great repair is welded together. Then at last it's done, and they're blasting themselves back to the airlock, stripping the spacesuits off. They hurry to the control deck again. Rocky bends anxiously over the telescreen, but the tiny speck that was Di cannot be seen. Lost her. She's not there, Rocky. Oh, she's out there somewhere, Mitch. She's out of range, that's all. That's all? Bearing 193. Watch it. I'm changing course. Get cracking, Rocky. Don't worry about me. Firing deflector rockets. <laughs> Only hope that patch we've made stands up to the strain. All right, watch the warning lights. Tell me if you see the faintest flicker. Right, out, Rock. 193. Uh, she should be on this course somewhere. She's just got to be on this course. Uh, how's the ship taking it? There's no warning so far. Hull seems okay. Uh, at least that's something. Swing that aerial and cover every bit of space ahead of us. Right. Uh, if we can get her on the telescreens, we'll find her, Mitch. We've got to get her on that screen. The streak swings onto her new course, her radar beam probing space, while Mitch and Rocky do everything in their power to find some evidence which will lead them to die. Meanwhile, Taurus, the ship they're supposed to find, is rushing ever nearer Saturn. On her control deck, immersed in a confusion of electrical equipment, Paul is working. Paul, I wondered where you had gone. What are you doing? I'm trying to do something with this radio. I found a loose wire that caused a short circuit. But the valves are blown. About half of them, as far as I can tell. Then, <laughs> what do you hope to do with I'm it? I'm not sure I can do anything yet, Ivan. But I've got an idea that may be worth trying. What's that? Well, at the moment, we can't send messages and we can't receive any. Both parts of the equipment are done. But I might be able to get enough bits out of this lot to fix one or the other. I did not realize you knew anything of radio. That was a hobby of mine when I was a kid. I mightn't get anywhere, but it's worth trying, don't you think? Which will you repair? The transmitter? Looks like I only had the stuff for the receiving end. Oh, I hope for a moment we might be able to send a message if you succeeded. Well, at least we may be able to hear if anyone's looking for us. But don't rely on it yet. I'm not promising anything. Leave it off for a moment and come over here to the magnifier screen. I want to show you something. All right. I will switch on the image. There. That is what our telescope is picking up ahead of us. Saturn. It looks so huge and close. The rings around it. Why, there are moons. There are lots of them in the rings. We are drawing very close, Paul. Oh, it's beautiful. And who knows what we might find there. But Saturn itself is mainly gas, isn't it? And rent by terrible storms. But there are satellites we can see, Paul. Many worlds. Yeah, many worlds. Out here in space for millions of years, never visited by man. Until now. I wonder what we'll find there. I wonder... Paul stands gazing at the unexplored mysteries on the screen with fascinated eyes. But far away across space, two men gaze at another screen. And there is hopelessness in their gaze. It's no good, Rocky. There's not a sign of her. The screen doesn't show a thing. Oh, Mitch, we've, we've got to find her somehow. I can't figure why the radar hasn't picked her up. While we were repairing the street, we, we must have drifted further beyond her course than I allowed for. Yeah, she's out there somewhere, beyond the range of our radar. Beyond the... You mean it right out of range? Oh, Mitch, it, it just must be this. It must be that, or we'd have picked her up. And to think the radar boys were all set to fit a super radar out of this tub, and we had to leave in too much of a hurry to wait for it. Yeah, I know. 
Don't bring that up. What Listen, Mitch, do? I'm going to risk changing course again. I'm afraid of losing her completely, but, well, I'll, I'll just have to do it. If only there was something to go on, and instead of just endless nothing. Well, according to my course calculations, she must be somewhere in that area over there. That is, if I'm right. Oh, look, if we hadn't have been such a rush, if we'd only waited for that radar... Yeah, I and... know, I know. Rocky! Hey, what? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Yeah, what? Well, remember when our radio went dead? Yeah. We couldn't hear a voice, so we thought the whole thing was jinx. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I just remembered. The carrier wave was still sending. We got the hum, remember? The carrier wave? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I, I don't see well, how... Well, look, it, it, it's probably still sending. Now, if we can pick up that wave, we can use it as a direction beam to lead us to her. You get it? Well, I... I don't know. Look, the wave is still going, right? The but carrier Mitch, wave is still on. Listen, what can we pick it up with? There's nothing. Well, we'll, we'll just have to make something. Make something? Oh, Mitch, pl- I don't Look, think... look, I'm trying to work it out, Rocky. Take it easy. Now, look, mm-hmm. take a sonic circuit, yeah. right? Yeah. Pass it through an electromagnetic field. Yeah, yeah all right. Now, then we get some extra rectifiers. Yeah. Use double tra- transformer output. Are you following me, all right? Well, I... I don't know. Look, I'll show it to you again. Yeah. You take a sonic circuit there, right? Right, okay. Now we pass it through an electromagnetic field, like so. Yeah, yeah. Get some extra rectifiers, just put them there, 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 and there. Use double transformer output. Now, Rocky, I think I might do it. Huh. What, Mitch? I'm gonna take the microwave set apart and make a detector beam out of it. Now, if that intercom still switched on, we might just pick it up. Working feverishly, he cuts away wiring. Ruthlessly, he tears out electronic parts. At times, it seems the job is being done at tremendous speed. At others, when Mitch is laboriously tracing the wires he wants through the tangled maze, it seems he'll never finish at all. And then Mitch checks the last connection and says tensely, This is it, Rocky Boy. Good. It'll probably blow all the valves if we have it on too long, but we'll have to chance that. Uh Uh-huh. You're right. Throw the switch, will you? This one? Yeah, right. It looks pretty makeshift, but it should be powerful enough to go a long way. I hope so. This is the sanding aerial here. I'm going to swing it slowly in a circle to cover where we think die is. Right. I want you to watch that dial, Rocky. This one? Yeah. Uh, what do I watch for? It just It's the slightest flick of the needle. Okay. Now, here we go. Did you see anything? No, not a flicker. You still nothing? Mm-mm, no. Well, if there's anything out there, we should have picked it up. Yeah. Hey, Mitch. Maybe her radio isn't sending. Oh, Rocky, it's got to be. If that radio's jinx, so is die. We're going to try more over this way. Okay. Anything? No, Mitch. Still nothing? No. Uh... I, wait, huh? Wait a minute, the needle moved. Yeah, yes, keep keep it pointing there. No, back a bit. Yeah? Right there. Hey, we're picking up current. Yeah, there's I'll a definite it. movement. I'll switch it through the speaker. There it is, Rocky, we got something. Whether it's die or not, I don't know, but let's get cracking and find out. Rocky listens to the thin peep of sound mixed with the continuous radio signals transmitted from the stars, then jumps for the controls. Will it really lead them to die? And if it does, will she be alive? There is exciting action ahead, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky's Star! While repairs are being carried out to the street's hull, Dye is blasted out into space by the bursting of an oxy cylinder. Before Rocky and Mitch can do anything, she has drifted beyond their reach. Working at frantic speed, they get the streak repaired and then go in search of her. But the radar picks up no sign. It seems she is lost forever. As a last hope, Mitch hurriedly pulls the microwave to pieces and makes a detector beam to try to pick up Dye's intercom radio. For a long, long time, the beam picks up nothing. Then suddenly there is a thin peep of sound. You hear that, Rocky? We got something. 
I don't know yet whether it's dying or not, but we got something. Uh, it could be the carrier wave from a radio. Here, swing that aerial around more, Mitch. See if we can get it stronger. Yeah, well, I hope I don't. Yeah, it's all right at the moment. Yeah. Ah, oh, look, I've lost it. Ah, swing it back again. Back again. How's that? Hey, there it is. There it is. Keep swinging. It's getting louder. Yeah, what bearing is that? About 204. I'll hold the course to wait that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's fading again. Well, swing back quickly, Mitch. That's it. That's the direction. All right, take a fix on the triangle of stars and keep it at that while I swing the streak round. I'll try, Rocky boy. All right, firing deflectors now. I'm losing it. No, I've got it again. Uh-huh. Well, that's the right course now. No, it's not, Rocky. We're losing it. We're losing it. Oh, find it again, Mitch. That's it. I've got it. Uh-huh. I'll have to adjust course again. Please, Rocky Opa, I'll get it right this time. Strange giving me the Martian misery. All right, I'll do my best. All right, now we'll see. Hey, you notice something? Yeah? It's stronger than ever. All right, I'll switch on the telescreen. You see anything? No, out of focus. Wait a minute. Hey, there must be something. This signal's getting louder all the time. No, there isn't. There's not a... Wait a minute. Yes, look, there it is. Is it die? Well, it's just a speck. It's getting closer, though. It... It's coming clearer. Ruggy by its hair. It's die, all right. I'll switch this thing off, eh? It's getting too loud. Right. Well, we'll reach you soon, Mitch. Get into a spacesuit and stand by the airlock, ready to get her. I certainly will. I'll get ready with the fired rockets to reduce speed and... Oh, great planets, I can't. Can't what? Can't use the fired rockets. Well, make it a funny joke, Rocky boy. Not now. All you gotta do is press that button. And blast so much radiation straight a die, it'll probably kill her. What? Giggling grasshoppers, what can we do? Well, there's only one thing to do, Mitch. I'll have to delay the rockets until we're just past her. It'll lead split-second timing, but, well, I think I can do it. You just got to, Rocky. That poor kid. Gosh, I hope her oxygen supply lasts. Never mind the gloomy thoughts, Mitch. Get into that spacesuit. I'm getting into it. Say, judging by the screen, Rocky, we're pretty near. All right. You'd better stay here a minute. Stand by that side screen and tell me the second we draw level with her. Right, Rocky boy. Here she comes. Now. Right. Not too much, Rocky. Don't slow too much if she get the blast. Then I'll have to give the stern tubes a touch. Ah. How's that? Perfect. All right, get out of that airlock and bring her in, Mitch. I'll be right behind you and hurry. In a fever of impatience, Mitch waits for the airlock door to open. Then he is blasting himself out toward the small, space-suited figure. In a panic, he sees that Di's eyes are closed. Grasping her shoulders, he touches off the booster jets once more, and the two of them are gliding toward the open airlock. When Mitch is hurriedly removing his helmet, the inner door opens and Rocky strides in. Oh, how is she, Mitch? I don't know, but looks bad to me. Get her helmet off here, look. Mm-hmm. Unconscious? Hey, look, Rocky, she got the air valve of her suit closed. Oh, that means she's run out of oxygen, Mitch. Yeah, get this suit off her. Yeah. Why shut the valve? Oh, it's to prevent further escape of air. She's been breathing the same air over and over and over. Oh, poor kid's just about suffocated. Yeah. At least I want to get this clear. Okay. <clears throat> well, at least the heating elements in her suit were still working. She's not frozen by the cold out there. Is there any any pulse, Rocky? Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, yeah, just a flick on it. It's very faint. She's hardly breathing, you know. We've got to get rid of that artificial lung and fast. Go ahead and open it up and I'll carry it. Okay, Rocky boy. Right. Come on, Di. Hey, let me give you a hand with it, Rocky. All right, thanks. Yep. All right. Take it easy, Mitch. Yeah. Right. Down. There we are. I think that ought to be it. Yeah. Okay, start the machine. Okay. You want the oxygen mask? Yes. We'd better put that over her face. Afraid that's all we can do. Yeah. Well, it makes me mad as a hornet, Rocky. If we hadn't been given the job of chasing those sparrowbrain kids in the Taurus, well, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, it's no use getting steamed up, Mitch. I am steamed up. Helping themselves to a spaceship like that with no thought of what trouble they might cause. If we ever find them, I'm gonna tell those bird brains a thing or two. I'm really mad. Yeah, I know, Mitch, I know, but look, that that really doesn't help much. No, I guess it doesn't. All we can do is watch and hope for the best. Poor die. At least that beam of mine found her anyway. The 
The two men settle down to watch and wait. But what Mitch doesn't realize is that his improvised beam has found more than Di. At the very moment that the tense search for her was going on, far away in the Taurus, Paul was bending over the microwave set he had been repairing. Ivan! Ilmer, have you seen Ivan? He's checking the equipment to make the water supply, I think, Paul. Then you come and listen. Listen? Why? You'll see when I've switched it on. You mean you've, you've actually got the radio working? Only the receiving part of it. receiving messages from Earth. No, but there's something Millie is interesting. Hear that? What is it? Some sort of radio wave. It keeps swelling and fading like that as if it's swinging around. And here it comes again. But what does it mean? I think it's a beam of some kind coming from a spaceship. But how can you know that? Every star sends out radio waves. It's probably something like that. No, Elmer, it's different, that sound. That's man-made. Now look, that's low at the moment, but watch when I swing the directional aerial around. See? Yes. The aerial's pointing back the way we've come, and it's at its loudest. You think there's a spaceship following behind us? It's the only explanation I can think of. Then switch on the radar scope and see if it picks up anything. Well, that's an idea. I'll direct it back the way we've come. Uh, nothing on the screen. What's that? Look, look, a sudden flare of pattern. Now it's gone. Honey, it looked almost like an explosion. Or, hang on, I'm going to switch on the Geiger detector. Normal radioactivity. But if that was what I think it was, the rays will take a few minutes to get here. And There, here? Radioactivity, a great wave of it. I'm from the same place where the radio beam came from. But what's it mean for? That means that flare pattern we saw was atomic rockets being fired. We're all right, Elmer. There's a spaceship following us. We can stop worrying. Mitch. Huh? Mitch, it's all right. She's coming round. We can stop worrying. Man. Hey, give me that oxy mask. She doesn't need it now. Die. Die, can you hear us, chicken? Oh. It's all right, Die. It's all right. Oh. Rocky. Rocky, where am I? It's all right, baby. There's no need to panic. You're back in the streak. Oh. And the old bellows. Oh, the arm lung. So you found me. Mm-hmm. Only just in time. Yeah, I whipped up a little gimmick. And, well, oh, want I... me to tell you about it? What about that beam, Mitch? Oh, it's terrific, honey. Look, I tell you what I did. I took a sonic circuit, yeah. passed it through an electromagnetic field, put in some extra rectifiers, used double transformer outfit, and made the little gimmick that got onto you. Uh, How's that, huh? Oh. Don't worry, Mitch. It was really terrific, though, Di. Come on, I think we can get you out of here. Oh, it's so wonderful to be in the streak again. Oh, Rocky, it was, it was horrible floating away and seeing her get smaller and smaller until... I couldn't see her at all. Oh, don't worry. All alone in black emptiness. Well, chicken, quit thinking about it or you give me the horrors. Now, you just sit down and take things easy. Oh, he's all right. But, Rocky, mm-hmm. what about the streak? She'll be way off course now. Yes, I, I know, but look, that really doesn't matter for a while. But it does matter, Rocky. Don't you realize we've got to get after the Taurus before she reaches Saturn. As far as I'm concerned, those kids can reach it and get into all the trouble that's gone. It'll do them good. Oh, no, Mitch. No. Have you forgotten how cold we estimate it is out there? And they won't have proper gear for it. We've got to try and overtake them, Rocky. This whole chase may be useless. Mitch shrugs his shoulders irritably, but Rocky realizes Di is right. He hurries to the control deck, and soon the streak is on her course once more. But they are far behind the Taurus, too far to reach her before Saturn. What will happen to Ilma, Paul, and Ivan? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost 
in space. An adventure with Rocky Star. The damage to the streak has been repaired and Di is rescued and recovered. Now our friends are turning their attention once more to the business that brought them out into space. Her nose pointed toward far distant Saturn, the streak is plummeting onwards in search of the Taurus, while Rocky and Mitch sit watchfully at the control. All dials okay, Mitch? Yeah, Rocky. No sign of strain in the hull just before we cut the rockets. Nah. Reckon we did a good job on it well. Mm, it's a wonder when you think of the speed we did it. Well, that last astro fix I took seems to be right. We should be able to relax now for a while. Yeah, I was checking with the radar scope just now. We couldn't pick up any signs of a ship ahead. Yeah. That's the big worry on my mind just now. We know that when they took the tourists, those youngsters planned to head for Saturn. But just what sort of a course did they work out? They can't know very much about astro navigation. Yeah, they could finish up light years away from Saturn. Yeah. Still, Rocky, all we can do is head for there and hope for the best. Uh, if only there was some way of picking up their ship. Ah, uh, you know, I wish I'd waited to have that super radar fitted instead of letting Chromats hustle me into leaving. I wonder. What? It's just an idea I got. It might work. Boy, after that beam you rigged up to find Di, I'd take a chance on any idea you dreamed of. Want me to tell you all about it again? No, not, not again. You're going to patent it when you get back to work That's or something. for sure. <laughs> Listen, what, what's this latest idea? Well, look, I was wondering if I could magnify the image on the screen somewhere. You know, blow it up. Yeah. Yeah, but you have nothing to magnify it with. Well, you know how you can amplify radio waves? You know, you pass them through the right set of valves and stuff, and they're twice as strong. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking maybe I could do that with the radar waves. All right. All right, then try it, Mitch. Anything so we know where we're heading for. Why can't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Looks like all I'm going to do this trip is take circuits apart and put them back together again. All I do is talk about them. And... <laughs> Listen, uh, stop complaining. You'll love it. You know you do. I'm admitting nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Guess us geniuses better get started. Will you listen to him? Yes. Get started and do everything you can, Mitch. It might save the lives of those three kids. Once again, Mitch plunges into the maze of electrical equipment that lines the back wall of Streak's control deck. But already the ship they seek is nearing her destination. At that very moment, Ivan, Paul and Ilma are gazing in awe through her teller windows. Well, it will not be long now. I have no idea Saturn was here huge. Already it seems to fill half the sky. Look back at the sun, Ilma. Oh, goodness, it's so tiny. It's like a big star. That gives some idea of how far we've come. There is not much light from the sun here, but we hardly need it, do we? No, with the terrific radiance of Saturn and its rings. <laughs> Just look at those rings. Thousands and thousands of miles wide. And I think they're made up of countless pieces of rock. Anything up to planet size, all circling round and round. Mm, that countless is right, Paul. If they really are the wreckage of some planet that blew to pieces, think how huge it must have been. Oh, we're nearly there. We'll have to decide what to do next now. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I suppose we better just harbor in space until that other ship, whatever it is, arrives here. There are so many satellites around the rings. You know, I have a feeling to land on one of those. But then we'd never be found, Ivan. Why not? Well, how would the other ship know which satellite we were on? For that matter, how would they know we were here at all? I suppose you are right, but it seems a great pity not to land, Paul. Well, it's the only sensible thing to do. Look at those rings. Millions of fragments. How could you possibly steer a course through that? You'd never arrive at a satellite to make a landing. It would be quite simple. Simple my foot. Course bearing multiplied by orbital velocity divided by speed. It is so simple. What? Geocentric velocity 240731 modified by depth of 7539. Oh, gosh, yes. Paul, what's he talking Your about? Efficiency. I don't know. Oh, he seems so strange. Ivan, Ivan. Snap out of it, Ivan. We're getting mighty close to those rings. We'll have to change course. Simple. It is so simple. He's going to the control. Ivan, 
Are you changing course? You mean bearing 117.5? Oh, yes, 117.5. You seems to be I better take over. Here, Yvonne, let me. No, get back. Don't touch me. Still like deflection. That is Don't all. fire those rockets. What's he doing? Is he taking the right course, Paul? I don't know. Yes, yes, reduce speed. He's mad. He said he'd ride into the ring. Ivan, you'll wreck us. Ivan, stop. Right like course now. You oh. fool. We won't last five minutes among all that. Change course. Course like red satellite. Course like red satellite. He's going to try and land on us. Oh, Ivan, stop. Please stop. Oh, he's not listening, Paul. Something happened to Something him. Something will happen to us in a minute. Ivan, give me those controls. Give me... <coughs> Get away. Get away and I'll kill you. Oh, Ivan. <coughs> Don't touch me. The course is right. Paul, can't we do anything? Can't we stop it? Too late, Elmer. I don't know what's happened to him, but we're heading straight into the middle of the rings. This is it. We're finished. In a few minutes, we'll be battered to a pulp. Horror-stricken, Paul and Elmer gaze through the windows as their ship plunges into the endless miles of whirling fragments. Only Ivan seems calm. He sits at the controls, a dreamy, faraway look in his eyes, and sends them onward. This is the moment when, far across space in the streak, Mitch has decided to try the results of his work on the radar scope. It works all right, Rocky boy. Just leave these problems to your old Uncle Mitch. Look at that screen. Hmm. Saturn certainly looks a lot closer. Yeah, well, I can get it closer still. All I need to do is turn this knob like turning up the volume on a radio. See? Now watch. Hey. Mitch, it's like looking through a huge telescopic lens. You know, I've certainly got to hand it to you. I can't see any spaceships. Uh, Just take a gander at Saturn. You know, it's almost possible to see the debris that makes up the rings. Yeah, I'll turn it up a little bit more. Okay. There we are. That's the limit now. Blurs it a bit, but still fairly clear. As you say, there's no sign of... Hey, wait! Hey, Mitch, did you see that? Yeah. A bright flash just on the edge of the rings there. I'll bet that was made by atomic jets. Sarah goes again. Yeah, that's the ship there, Mitch. We just can't make out the shape of it. Yeah, it must be changing course away from the rings. Yeah? Yes, you know, they'll need... To... Now, wait. Huh? Mitch, Mitch, look at that. It's very blurred, but wouldn't you say that ship was heading straight into the rings? You're right. Those space-happy kids must be as screwy as a, as a spiral staircase. Ah, that ship's gone. Rocky, do you think they can possibly have known where they were heading? I, I just can't understand it. No one could possibly navigate through those fragments. Well, they're gone. There's no sign of them now. Oh, they must be battered to a pulp. I, I don't see how they could avoid it. What do we do? Go back? No, Mitch, no. We still have to find that heavy plutonium. Besides, I'm not giving up the Taurus until I know that I have to. We'll go on. And when we get to Saturn, look for some evidence of what happened to her. But while the watchers in the distant streak shake their heads sadly over the Taurus's fate, that ship is streaking through the scattered masses of rock as if she has a charmed life. I don't get it, Elmer. Look out there. All space filled with great chunks of rock, and we haven't hit one. It's almost as if Ivan knew there was some sort of clear path through it all. But how could he? We've never been within 900 miles of here. Well, it's Ivan who's done it. Ivan? Ivan, where are you taking us? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh the, the course is right. We'll get through. Through to where? Uh, I'm not sure. There's a planet, I think. A, a satellite. But how could you know to take this course? And what were all those figures and calculations you kept mumbling? Where'd you get them from? <laughs> it all seems so hazy now. Funny, I, I just suddenly had a strong impulse to land on a red satellite. How I knew it was there, I don't know, but... Figures and calculations kept coming into my head. I had to pilot the ship this way. I just had to. Why did you have to? I, I don't know. There was some, some influence. You looked as if you were hypnotized. Look what we're traveling through. How we've escaped collision. It's miraculous. I, I don't know. It, it seems incredible, but somehow I know that is a planetoid. Look at the temperature gauges. The outside temperatures. Hundreds of degrees below zero. Then what use will this planetoid be? If we land, we'll die. Yes, yes, it is time to reduce speed. Oh, he's off again. Atmosphere 90% normal, height 50 miles, deceleration rockets 20 seconds time. Oh, Paul, I'm scared. How can he know these things? He'll kill us. What can we do? Any minute we might collide and... 
Oh, look at him. Paul, look. Look ahead of us. There is a satellite. A red planetoid, like he said. And we're going to land on it. Paul and Dilma stare at the approaching planetoid in wonder. But how could Ivan have known about such things? And what lies ahead of them now? There are exciting developments ahead, so be sure to hear the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. With the streak still far behind them, Ilma, Paul, and Ivan have reached Saturn. They find the planet to be unbelievably huge, and the famous rings composed of countless fragments of rock stretching for thousands of miles. And there are satellite planets amongst them, but navigation through the litter of cosmic wreckage looks impossible and they decide to turn aside. Suddenly, Ivan starts acting strangely. Seizing the controls and muttering complicated calculations under his breath, he heads the Taurus straight into the danger zone. It seems certain they will collide with one of the many obstacles and be destroyed. But miraculously, they avoid every one. Then as Ivan fires the deceleration rockets, Ilma gives a shout. Paul! Paul, look ahead of us. There is a red planetoid, like Ivan said. And we're going down to land on it. Ivan seems almost in a trance. Look at him. Let's be deceleration rockets in 20 seconds. It's someone sending him the information. But who? And how? He's going to fire the rockets again. <laughs> He looks like making a perfect landing. But how did he know this place was here? Oh, it's frightening, Paul. I don't want to land at all. Well, we're here now, so we'll have to. But the temperatures, hundreds of degrees below zero. Oh, we'll never live. I know. But Ilma, look. Look at the temperature dials. They're registering ten above zero outside now. Ten above? But all the rest are so terribly cold. How can it be warmer here? Well, I don't know. But that's what the dials say. Too much speed, rapid deceleration. Rocket blasts every five seconds. Take care. Yes, take care. Rapid deceleration. You better lie back in the seats, Paul. I think Ivan's warning us. Right, strap yourself in. Look out, here it comes. Earth ship sinks slowly against the tremendous thrusts of the landing jets, gently, gently down, and comes to rest in this alien world. Paul and Ilma sit sprawled back, dazed by the tremendous pressure they have experienced. Ivan sits as if in a trance. As the others stir, he looks dazedly around. Paul? I'm okay. And you? Uh, yes. Uh, Everything's so quiet. Yeah. A perfect landing. We have arrived. Uh, oh. uh, what happened? How did we get here? You mean you don't know? You brought us here, Ivan. You landed the ship. A good landing, too. I, I do not understand. I seem to dream about going to a planetoid in the ring of Saturn. Well, that's where we are. You knew how to get here, Ivan. How did you know? It it all just seemed to come into my head. I, I knew the planetoid. I knew the bearings, the calculations... But how did I know? I think there's some kind of well, influence, a hypnotism or, or telepathy or something. It was controlling you, Ivan. It wanted us to land here and landed the ship through you. It's the first time anything like that has ever happened to me. How do you feel now? Oh, fine. I, I am as always. Well, let's have a look at this place and see what it's like. Paul, Ivan, the temperature gauges. Have they changed again? They're showing an outside temperature of 68 degrees. 68? Well, that's a bit of a change from hundreds below. But how could the temperature rise so much? I don't know, Ivan. But after the way we got here, I'm prepared to believe anything. It's a very strange place. From up there, it looked red. But look, the soil's a sort of blue color. Yes, and, and there is very little vegetation. Spiky-looking stuff, isn't it? Looks a barren sort of place. <gasps> look! What? Over there, a horrible sort of thing coming towards us. I can't. 
Oh, heck, look at it, Ivan. Some sort of a, a creature bowling around and around like a wheel. Is it a creature? Well, it seems to have a round body and three legs spaced around it like a letter Y. Well, it is like a wheel. It just spins from one leg to the next, round and round. It has come to look at us, all right. It is stopping. Hey, see that? It's bouncing on one leg. Looks like it could use the other two as a pair of arms. Oh, that horrible eye in the middle divided into three. I suppose it is an eye. Very little else it could be. There are more of them coming. Six of them. Looks like they're joining the first one. Yes, they are all standing on one leg. And using the other two as arms, like I said. They're beckoning. Look, they're beckoning to us. They know we're watching. Oh, well, we, we don't have to go out. There's no need. Isn't there, Paul? What do you mean? Do you feel anything? Yes, I do. It's a feeling I should go out. A sort of compulsion. That's funny. I feel the same way. I do. You know what I think? They brought us here. They controlled you, Ivan, by telepathy or something and showed you the way. Yeah. And now they're willing us to leave the ship. <laughs> it's getting stronger and stronger. Uh, I don't want to go, and yet I feel I must. Oh, it's horrible. We mustn't go out there. Well, what, we can, what can we do about it, Elmer? You know, we have to. We have to go. Rocky, we have to find out what happened to the Taurus. We have to. Yes, I know, Di. That's, that's just how I feel. I can't see how they could possibly survive plunging into those rings, but I've got to make quite sure that they did survive. How long before we arrive? Well, I've just been trying to work it out. If my calculations are correct, it should take about another 36 hours. Hey, where's Mitch? Having a sleep. He says he's worn out by all the special equipment he's in building. Uh, I shouldn't wonder. You know, he, he did a terrific job. Hey, Di, you uh, you haven't located anything giving off the spectrum of the heavy plutonium yet? No. I'm sat in front of that spectroscope until I'm nearly cross-eyed. Uh, but, Rocky, so far there hasn't been a sign. Uh, I didn't think so. Oh, well, let's not worry. There's plenty of time yet, really. We're... Oh, it's radar alarm. Hey, there's something ahead of us. Quickly, Di, turn on the telescreen. Eh. It's funny. The alarm's definite enough. I can't see anything through the screen. I... I hey, Di! Di, come here quickly. Here, over here. Look, have a look at this. Rocky, what is it? Uh, on the screen there. Now, just a sort of a faint blur, do you notice? Or a, or a mist? Yes, I think I can see it. Yeah. That's strange. What do you make of it? Oh, Rocky, I don't know. I can't imagine what it could be. Ah. Unless it's cosmic dust. Cosmic dust? Why, that's it. Must be a great cloud of it ahead of us. Well, according to the screen, it's stretched right across. Yeah, right across, eh? Well, that means we can't possibly get around it. There's only one thing for it, Di. We'll have to stop and stop quickly. If we run into that stuff, it'll fill us as full of holes as a colander. I know. Yeah, we'll lose every scrap of air we've got, you know. Oh, Rocky, it's looking awfully close, isn't it? it? Certainly is, Di. All right. Don't worry. Stand by for rapid deceleration. Oh, but what about Mitch? Don't worry about Mitch. He'll be all right on his bunk. All right, here goes. That's it. You all right, Di? Yes, Rocky. All right, then hang on. Here goes again. Oh, that'll be a little better. I say, Di, check the angle of sight meter, will you? What speed change does it give? It's slowing. Uh-huh. Fifteen. Yes. Ten. Yeah. Seven. Yes, go on. Four. Mm -hmm. Less than one. Less than one. Good. Then we're stationary. Die quickly. Check that screen now. I will. Rocky, it still seems to be approaching. Still approaching? Here, wait a moment. Let me see, Di. Let... Hey. Hey, you're right. It is still approaching. It must be traveling across our path in a diagonal line towards us. Then what do we do? Well, there's only thing, one thing we can do. Di, we'll have to go into reverse and the thing's clear of us. Ah, boy, and we were so near Saturn, too. Oh, I only hope those kids aren't needing us. Ilma, Paul, we cannot give way to this compulsion. We must try and hold on to our willpower. But how? We must go out there. No. We, we must lie on this sand, Paul. Then we run down into the water. Water 
Remember, it is cool on our bodies and we swim. You swallow water and it makes you cough. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Swimming. That's something I'd forgotten. I don't feel I have to go now. As long as we think of something those creatures don't know, they can't invade our minds. Yeah, that's right. That's a great scheme of yours, Ivan. Then should we take off, leave this place? I can't remember the calculations. We'll have to find out what they are. As long as we can remember to keep strong thoughts, perhaps it'll be safe to explore a little. But can we get out there? I mean, what kind of atmosphere is it? I'll see what the analyzer shows. Methane and carbon dioxide. Oh, then we cannot leave without spacesuits. We must get them. Wouldn't it be better to blast off again, Ivan? I'm afraid. Yes, it, it would be better. But what hope have we of steering a course to all this stuff up there on our own? No, he's right, Elmer. All right, whatever you say. But we must be careful, please. Well, let's get these spacesuits. I want to know why we were brought to this place. Come on. Outside, the seven strange creatures stand on their single legs, beckoning. But how will they treat the earthlings, and what strange adventures lie ahead? There are exciting developments to come, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star! While Rocky finds the streak's course temporarily blocked by a passing cloud of deadly cosmic dust, far away the Taurus has landed mysteriously on a planetoid near Saturn. Ilmer, Paul and Ivan find themselves being impelled by thought power to leave the ship. The compulsion comes from a group of strange creatures with round bodies and three legs sticking out like the spokes of a wheel. The Earthlings manage to resist the compulsion, but realize they can't take off from the planet without finding out the course calculations. So nervously climbing into spacesuits, they prepare to leave the ship. Are you ready, you two? Yeah. I'm just fastening my oxy cylinders, Ivan. I wonder what those... those tripeds want with us. What could they want with someone so completely different from themselves? It must be just curiosity. You think that's all? Truly, Ivan? I can imagine no other reason. Can you? No. It might be wise to take ray guns with us, though, don't you think? Oh, yes. We can't go out there helpless. Hmm. All right. I will get three pistols. You nervous, Ilma? Yes. Aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. Well, if only Ivan could have remembered all those calculations he used to get us here, we could have taken off again without needing to go out there. But he would never have known such communications. They were just, well, communicated to him by... By the tripeds. Yes. Yeah, I don't suppose we can blame him for not remembering. All I hope is that we can get the dope from them again so we can leave here. That means we're completely in their power. Here we are. Stick one in your belt, each of you. And let us get onto the airlock. Thanks. I've never used a gun before. Take it, Ilma. All you have to do is point it and pull the trigger. You'll find it quite a comfort if anything goes wrong. We must not be too anxious to use ray fire. Better if we can persuade them that we are friendly. Well, it won't be long now. Here goes. Helmets on. Testing intercom. Can you hear me? Yes, Ivan. Coming through okay. I'll start the mechanism. Well, this is it. Come on, the ramp's down. Ilma in the middle. Keep close together. And don't be scared, Ilma. I can see them. Watching us with those eyes. Oh, they look horrible. Like having an eye in the middle of your stomach. I can't get over the way they bowl along like a hoop on three legs. And then use one to stand on and the other two as arms. Yes. Oh, look, they have stopped beckoning. Now they see we are coming. Oh, it's terribly hard to walk. I feel as if my legs are made of lead. Why is it, Ivan? It is just the effect of gravity, Elma. After the weightlessness of space, no cause for alarm. Well, here we are. Let us stop. They're forming a circle around us. I'm keeping my hand on my ray pistol. They are not trying to touch us. What should we do? How do we show we're friendly? Better switch on our outside speakers so they can hear us. We are friends. Friends. Understand? Oh, what use is it to speak? They will not understand our language. They're waving their arms and swaying to one another. Seems like they're talking amongst themselves. 
We are friends. Friends. I think they understand, Paul. They are doing it again. They can't understand our words, but perhaps they can sense our feelings. You are welcome here. What was that? Did you hear something? Yeah. I did too. You are welcome here. There it is again. But they do not seem to be speaking. They're just standing there swaying about. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I think I do. It's not a real voice at all. Well, how could they speak English? It's a sort of a, a mental one. Of course. Telepathy. We're hearing it in our minds. We'd better try to talk with them. We come from Earth. Yeah, from Earth. That is known to us. Known? But how could they possibly know? They must have known we were up there to guide us in like that. Come. They want us to go with them. I'm a bit scared, boys. Have no fear. You are creatures of great skill. We wish to entertain you in our city. Come, Earth creatures. See, they lead the way. I'm not trying to force us in any way. Come, Ilma. Paul and I will take care of you. We'll go with them and see what they want with us. Walking clumsily in the unaccustomed gravity, Ilma, Paul and Ivan move off in the direction indicated. The tripeds, hopping easily on one leg, accompany them, and they reach what appears to be a dull metallic platform resting on the ground. Mounting it, the tripeds turn triple-eyed gaze on the hesitating earthlings and indicate that they mount it too. Meanwhile, far away, Rocky is waiting impatiently for his course to clear. That cosmic dust still ahead, Rocky boy? Yes, Mitch. It's moving across our path at a good speed, but well, there seems to be a huge cloud of it. Yeah, it's one thing in space I can't get used to. Yeah. You know, back on Earth, if there's a dust storm, well, you drive right through the thing. But out here, you go for your life. Uh, Mitch, every one of those rock particles is traveling at a colossal speed. Mm. They could penetrate the streaks hull easier than high-velocity bullets. Yeah, I know all that stuff, Rocky. It, it just don't seem right, that's all. Hey, Di's squinting on a spectroscope gadget again, looking for heavy uranium. Yeah. You think we'll ever find that stuff? Mitch, we've just got to find it. I told you what the president of the Solar Council said. Yeah, this catastrophe that's supposed to be facing the human race. I don't get that at all. Well, neither do I, but, well, they wouldn't pay the expense of a trip like this just to look for the Taurus. They must want it pretty urgently. Mm. Well, let's check the telescreens again. Right. I'm sick of waiting around his face. Yeah, so am I. You know, everything's against us, this trip. Okay, switch on. Yeah, I suppose we're really in no hurry. Mm, I am, Mitch. I don't like the way Taurus disappeared into that ring of all those various rings around Saturn. Yeah. I want to find out what's happened to those kids. That dust looks as thick as ever. Yeah, it would. Switch it off. Say, what's this about wondering what happened to them? You said yourself the Taurus must have been battered to pieces. Well, I want to make sure. How are you going to do that? Those uh, rings around Saturn go for thousands of miles. Uh -huh. Thousands of miles of chunks of rock. Asteroids, satellites, and... All that stuff all whirling around. How are you ever going to find a wreck of towers among them? Which I'm not so sure that there will be a wreck. Oh, but, Rock, you said yourself no one could navigate a ship through all that stuff. They'd be blasted to bits. Well, then why didn't we see the explosion on the telescreens? Hmm? The atomic motors would have gone up for sure. I never thought of that. There wasn't a blast at all, was there? Mm -hmm. We simply saw their rockets fire a couple of times. Then they disappeared. What do you think happened? Well, I don't know, Mitch. But as soon as we can get going again, I certainly mean to try and find out. Uh, switch on the screen, we'll have another look. Hey, hey, but Rocky boy, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't be thinking of trying to fly the straight through all that stuff in the rings, would you? Yeah, if necessary. The parents of those youngsters must be worried sick. But I'm going to find out all I can for them. Yeah, the dust seems to be getting a bit thinner, Mitch. Shouldn't be long now. If yeah, that's what you're aiming to do, Rocky, the longer it takes to clear, the better I'll like it. I wonder what did happen to those kids. Ivan, they want us to sit on this platform thing. Well, it looks harmless enough. Just 
dull metal resting on the ground. All the tripods are squatting there with their legs folded. Come join us. Again. Oh, come on, let's do what they want. From their example, I think perhaps we had better sit down. Well, it seems harmless enough. They're all just sitting there taking no notice of us at all. Do you sense anything? I I, I do, Ilma. It, it is strange, but I keep finding the thought, Ra is going through my head. So do I. Now you mention it, I'm the same. I just found myself thinking this platform thing should rise up from the ground. It's a silly thing to think. It is. Look, Paul. Where are rising? We can't be. You're right, rising straight up from the ground. But how could... We're not rising now. The platform's moving. It's gliding forward. We are a good 30 feet above the ground. But how could it be? Look, there's no sign of a motor or any kind. No sound. It's just a flat piece of metal a few inches thick. Look at the tripods. How they stare. They seem to be concentrating. So you, you don't think... Oh, I think they are propelling this platform by some kind of foot power. But that's crazy. Remember how we all got that idea of rising. We must have been picking up their concentration. I'm getting nervous of these things. They know too much. And yet, look, there are ruins down there. Where? Oh, yeah, look, Ilmer. There's been some sort of peculiar buildings down there. I wonder what sort of buildings they have now. Look at those dome-shaped things. Oh, see? One across there, and there's one over the other side. Maybe they're buildings. Hey, look over there. There's a sort of tunnel going into the hillside. And this is where that platform is, is taking us. Well, then, if those domes are buildings, maybe that passage leads to dungeons or something. You know what I think? We're prisoners of these things, and there's nothing we can do about it. The hole in the hillside looms ahead. Are they really prisoners? What strange adventures lie ahead? There are exciting developments to come, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. While the streak is held up by a huge cloud of cosmic dust, far away, Ivan, Paul, and Ilma have made a landing on a satellite of Saturn, guided by a mysterious influence. When they leave the Taurus, they encounter strange three-legged beings who communicate with them by telepathy. At the request of the tripeds, they seat themselves on a metal platform and find it gliding through the air propelled by intense thought power. Then Ivan points to a tunnel in the mountain ahead. When the platform glides smoothly into it, Ilma says excitedly over the intercom... Boys, look! We're in the tunnel. And, gosh, it isn't dark. Honey, I, I can't see any lights anywhere, Ilma. It is the rock. See, it glows with radiance. You're right, Ivan. It's all luminous. Isn't it the weirdest effect? I wonder where it leads. I think we should keep our outside mics switched on, as well as those we use talking to each other. Yeah, so we can hear what's going on outside. I'm not so nervous at the tripods now. They sit so still. Still, as if in a trance. All that concentration to make a vehicle like this fly. What a means of transport. But Paul, it's very advanced of them. Think what minds they must have. Yeah, and think of having to sit and think so hard when you want to go places instead of just letting an engine do the work for you. You only think that because... Oh, look, look, we're arriving somewhere. A big open space. Some kind of underground hall. And passages or streets leading from it. All carved out of the rock. Pretty clumsily carved. There are more of those tripod things, whirling along on their three legs like like rimless wheels, bowling on their spokes. The platform is sinking down. Oh, well, we have arrived. The platform is down. I wonder just what this place is. Behold a city. A hopper tie. There's the telepathic voice again. A hopper tie, eh? They're getting off the platform and beckoning us to follow. Well, come then. City? I don't think much of it. They're not much better than cave dwellers. When you think of those ruins we saw outside, the ruins of quite imposing building, it's unexpected to find them living like this. And the ones who brought us here seem to be telling the others about it. Ivan, I wonder if they always sway about like that when they're talking. If, <laughs> if you could call it talking. They're certainly strange-looking objects. 
If anyone had told me I'd meet creatures with a sort of central body like the hub of a wheel and three legs sticking out like spokes, I'd have said they were out of their mind. Hey, what goes on, I wonder? They're forming a circle round us. They're moving closer. I don't like the way they're looking at us. Paul! Ivan! They're taking hold of me. They're... They're trying to take my spacesuit off. If they do, that you'll die in this atmosphere. Quick, Paul, concentrate. Try and get it over to them that we can't live outside these suits. Oh, quickly. Stop them. Help. Move together, Ivan. No. 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 Dream up a picture of Ilma dead. You can't live without suits. Please understand. Leave me alone. Please. Please. Can't live. Can't live. We die without suits. They're letting you go. You are afraid. You need this casing. It's the voice. Yes, yes, don't remove. We can't breathe your atmosphere. Understand? Concentrate on our atmosphere, Ivan. Oxygen, see? Breathe oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen? You choke without this casing? Yeah. Yes, yes, we, we must, must have, have it. it. We understand. Oh. Thank goodness for that. Oh, keep close to me, boys. I'm afraid. It is all right, Ilma. They are moving away. Forming a circle around us. They seem to be having some sort of conference. Oh, I wish they hadn't come. Oh, I'm a bit that way myself. They're so peculiar. Paul, look, they, they have stopped their discussion. You will follow. You will come where you are shown. They are beckoning us. And I don't like to go. You think we can refuse, Ivan? How can we? Be not afraid. You are creatures of great skill. We honor you. Oh, well, come on. We'd better go quietly. Well, then keep together. And remember, we've got ray pistols if we need them. Come. Follow. Follow. At least they've left us alone. But, Paul, why do you think they've told us to stay in this room carved from the rock? I don't know. They were definite enough that we shouldn't leave. What do you think, Yvonne? Well, I, I don't like the way they are staring at us. I must admit that. And there was something so, so speculative about it. I'm afraid they may become too curious about us. It could become dangerous. Like when they tried to take Yilma's spacesuit off? Oh, it was terrible. I felt like some kind of guinea pig under observation. Yes, that is my feeling. Well, then let's get out of here. Let's go now. No, wait. It may be too dangerous. If necessary, we could blast our way out. We do not know what other powers these tripeds have. Look, it's better to wait till things are quieter than leave as secretly as possible. Yes, there are too many about just now. Okay. But I hope we don't have to wait too long. This place has given me the jitters. Oh, dear. If only that search ship had caught up with us before we got here... I wonder where they are now. Well, looks like the way is clear now, Rocky boy. No sign of cosmic dust on the screen. Mm-hmm. I'll have a new course computed from the last astrofix in a few minutes, Mitch. Now we get moving again, huh? Yeah. To Saturn? That's right. And you're going to dive straight into the rings after the uh, Taurus? Right? Uh-huh. And we'd be like a moth trying to fly through a hailstorm, huh? Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And yet you're still gonna have the streak in it. That's right. Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. Do you have to keep on saying that's right as if it's gonna be like a nice Sunday afternoon drive or something, huh? Hmm? Uh, Aren't you listening to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. What's wrong, Mitch? What's wrong, he says, with a big <laughs> smile on his cherubic little face. What's wrong? Well, what are you sounding off about? You plan a nice little suicide, John, and then because a guy gets a little bit jittery, you say, what's wrong? You gets a little bit what? Jittery. Shaky, you know, nervous. Jittery? Yeah. Nervous? Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> you? Yeah. Ah. I don't believe it. Yeah, what's wrong with me getting jittery? Ain't well, I allowed to have human feelings or something? <laughs> yes, certainly. If you wish, but, well, I don't know. You're, you're just not the type, that's all. I'm... Well, huh. <laughs> well, I guess that's right. 
Yeah, I was, uh, I was just putting on acts, see, Rock. I just wanted to kind of get you on a ball. Yeah, that's what I thought, Mitch. That's yeah. what I thought. Besides, you know, I've been thinking. There may be more to it than just trying to get through those rings, you know. Hmm? Oh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Well, there's no telling what things there may be out there at Saturn. Yeah? And, Mitch, whatever the Taurus has become involved in, don't forget, we'll find it, too. Ah. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, well, there's something mysterious about the way she disappeared like that, don't you agree? Yeah. Certainly is. And what's more, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Just a sec. Mm hmm. I think that should do it. Okay. All set? Yeah. How are the nerves? Oh, they're all right. I was only kidding. Get <laughs> off my back, Rocky. <laughs> okay, hang on, Mitch. Course for Saturn set. Check your seat. See, Jack. Right. Check course. Course set. Okay. Stand by. Firing primary jets. Firing propulsion jets. Hey, Rocky. Uh-huh. Which is Saturn? That large star right ahead. Right ahead, huh? Uh-huh. I wish I knew what goes on out there. <laughs> Inma, I think this is the time. Are you sure the radiance from the rocks is dim because it's night, Ivan? It's as good an explanation as any. Hang on, you two. Remember the tripod we found keeping watch outside this cave? I'm going to sneak a look at him. Oh, do be careful, Paul. Well, Paul, is he still there? Yeah. I think he's asleep or something. He squatted down with his limbs folded across his eye. Then, quickly, we must slip out of here. Go on, Elma. Yes, he must be asleep. Which way? Which way? This is the way they brought us. Down here. Keep your outside microphones on so we'll hear any sound. I'd hate to walk into tripods on the prowl. Thank goodness there don't seem to be any about. Around this way. Stop. What, Ivan? A cave full of them. All with their limbs folded up like, like the other. Sneak past quickly. Made it. The tunnel's over there. Keep in the shadows. All clear. Now, walk fast. Uh, made it. Oh, thank goodness. This is only the beginning. Let us cut through this tunnel as quickly as possible. What is that? A peculiar noise. What? It's one of those tripeds rolling this way. Quick, you two. We've got to hide. <laughs> The escaping three look frantically around as the strange rolling rhythm of the tripod comes closer, closer. Will they be found? And will Rocky discover them in time? There are thrilling developments ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Delayed by cosmic dust, Rocky is still far from Saturn. But as the streak hurtles onwards through space, at least he knows the Taurus reached the planet by the atomic jet blasts picked up on the radar screen. But on one of Saturn's satellites, Ivan, Paul and Ilma are in a tense situation. Alarmed by the strange three-legged creatures that have taken them prisoner, they're attempting to escape. But just as they reach the tunnel mouth that leads to freedom, the rotating footfalls of an approaching tripod are heard. Quickly, into this cleft in the rocket is our only hope. Oh, it's too small. Surely we'll be safe. I am almost out of the tunnel. Quiet, it is near here. Say it. It's gone past. Quiet. Mistress. I don't see how it could. Perhaps their sight is not so good when they are whirling along like that. Come, we must hurry. I saw you peering after it, Ivan. Which way was it heading? Towards the recess where we were. Well, let's run, please. All right. Yeah, come on. Hey, what? Ivan is shooting up towards the roof of the oh, tunnel. Oh, the low gravity. Oh, Paul, are you all right? Try and land on your hands and knees to break the floor. I'll try. Oh, Paul, oh. are you all right? Oh, yeah. I took the roof on my shoulder. It saved my helmet. 
Well, don't hang around because of me. Come on. Do not try running so hard in this light gravity. Well, and how? Oh, I got it. Lean forward and leap. And we must make good speed. There is much more tunnel still ahead of us. Leaning forward, the three space-suited figures hurry in great flat leaps along the half-gloom of the tunnel. The light gravity helps their progress, but the unaccustomed exercise is very tiring. When at last the tunnel entrance opens before them, Ilma calls through the intercom. Please, boys, can't we rest for just a moment? We, we should keep moving, but perhaps for a moment. I won't object to a breather. I wonder if we're being followed. We will hear soon enough. Best to decide which direction to go. Over there. Weren't the ruins over there somewhere? They could make a good hiding place. Yes. I can just see them. There's a sort of a radiance about the darkness. Wait. See your outside mics are on and listen. They're coming. we got to get away from here quick. Too slow to climb down the ruins. We must jump. Jump? Oh, no, Eva. Yes, Oma. In this light gravity, we'll nearly float down. Stealing themselves to the effort, the three fugitives leap into the darkness. Outwards they go, dozens of yards, and then they're sinking downwards toward the vague outlines of the ruins in the darkness below. Meanwhile, the streak is nearing the end of her journey. Di looks up from the magnified image she has been studying on the telescreen. It's going to be difficult, Rocky. Those rings around Saturn are just a collection of cosmic wreckage. I don't see how any ship could get through. Well, the Taurus did. Yeah, we can't be sure of that, Rocky. Well, Mitch, there was no explosion. She must have got through. Let me have a look, Di. Giggling grasshoppers. Talk about an obstacle race. How many planets blew the bits to make that little collection? I wonder how long the fragments have been circling Saturn thousands of miles deep. Yeah. Say, have you seen what it really looks like, Rocky boy? Uh Uh-huh. I have. And you're still going to try and pilot the streak through that? Mitch, we were sent out to find the Taurus and bring the youngsters back with us. That's our job, and we're going to do it. Yes, but how, Rocky? How can you calculate a course through all that? It's a lot clearer now we're so close. Yeah, come and have another look. But come on, I'll be obstinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, It is pretty thick. Remember what one little meteor did to us? Well, what can we expect if we get mixed up in that? It's almost certain we'll be wrecked, Rocky. But die, the Taurus flew in there. I bet you'll never fly out again. It's impossible for atomic motors not to explode, Rocky. I've got to find some trace of the Taurus. Well, you're the skipper. If you still decide you can take the streak in, well, we'll tag along too. I, I'll admit it, it, it does look bad, but... Well, now we've got here, we, we have to find them. But we could cruise into a circuit outside the ring. Yeah, we could use deep radar. If those space-happy kids are really in there, the radar will find them. All right. All right. If you can get a radar bearing on them, at least it'll give us a definite idea where to look. If we stand a chance of ever finding anything in that. There are hundreds of thousands of miles to be searched, Rocky. Well, don't worry, Rocky boy. The radar will do the trick, all right. I'll fix up one of my super circuits. I'll get it rigged right now. Okay, good man, Mitch. Oh, I'm worried, Di. I wonder what did happen to the Taurus. I wonder if those poor kids are alive and what they're doing now. Far around the mighty Saturnian ring on the dark side of the satellite, the three are very much alive. But as they make their way cautiously through the ruins, Ivan's space-suited figure lags behind. Ivan, your knee! Are you all right? Don't worry about me, Ilma. I will manage. You sure, Ivan? Yes, Paul. Do not worry. Just a short rest. Jumping in the dark like that? It's a wonder we didn't break our necks. Oh, well, it got us well away. I wish it were lighter. These ruins are fascinating. Well, to me, getting back to our ship is the most fascinating thing at the moment. We are safe standing here in the shadows. We may never see such things again. Look at them. Did you ever see buildings so strange? It is a stone that, that, that seems almost almost like a metal. Look, I'd rather keep going if you can manage it. A little more rest and I will go on the faster. Can you hear any sign of the tripeds? Quiet a moment. I think I can. It seems very far off, though. Oh, let us go, then. Was it this way to the ship? 
Yeah, I think so. I'd rather go across this way, I think. But why, Ilma? I don't know. It, it's just a feeling. Yeah, I think you're right, Ilma. Let us go that way. Ivan? Yes, it, it seems the best route to take. Well, then come on. Across the open and... No, wait. Well, we must hurry across. Wait, Paul. Why do you want to go there? It is away from the ship. Yeah, but It's I... the tripeds, their mental power. We must resist it. I must go, Ivan. Don't hold me back. You must resist. Think of Earth as we did before. Ilma, Paul, don't let them trick you. Trick, but... Uh, think of the Earth. The swimming, remember? The swimming. Oh, yes, of course. Ilma, snap out of it. We've got to get away from here. I must go. Grab her other arm, Paul. Come, Ilma. No. Remember Earth. The blue skies. The fleecy clouds. The green fields. Remember. Fields? Don't. What are you pushing me along like this for? Where was I going? We are going to this spaceship. Remember. Yes. Of course, I knew that. Oh, thank goodness she's come out of it. Out of what? The mental power, remember? The tripeds must be drawing close to us. We must keep our thoughts on Earth at all costs. Make straight for the ship. Nothing on the radar, Mitch? Nah. That is, if you can call a few million chunks of rock, nothing. Still, you never know. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, I don't like this situation. Ah, uh, me neither. We've got nothing for it, though. All we can do is to keep trying. That's for sure, unless you come up with any other bright ideas. Mm. You gonna keep on this course? I don't know, Mitch. You'll notice we're getting near to the night side of Saturn. Yeah, if they got the two side, night day side, this Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I don't see any point in going on into the shadow. No. Nah. No, it's too dangerous with all this flying rock and stuff. Yeah, that's true. This is what I thought. What are we going to do? Well, Mitch, I think we'll go as far as we can and then change course back again. Have you had a look at the screens lately? Yeah. I think I'd better check. All huh? right. Make it's it snappy, Mitch. Right. Uh, Anything coming through? No, nah, just the usual. Uh, well, listen, Mitch. As I said, I'll go in as far as we can and then change course and we'll come back again. Yeah. And you'll watch that radar like a hawk. That's for sure. If the Taurus is anywhere near Saturn and still in one piece, we've got to find her. But Ivan, the Taurus must be somewhere near. We've just got to find her. Oh, it is so difficult in the darkness. Things and things appear differently. Wait a minute. That sort of hump in the shadow over there. Haven't we seen that somewhere before? I, I don't know whether... Yes, it's one of the dome things. What we thought might be buildings. Best keep away from it, then. Wait a minute. Listen. It's giving out a humming sound. Then we will keep clear. See, there is another over there. I know our position now. The Torah should be, uh, should be over there. Well, come on, then. Let's get to her quick. Yes, there is very little cover. We must keep behind this spiky stuff all we can. Well, we'll just have to risk the last... Hey, look. Can you see sort of gleam over there like metal? I can't. Yes. Ivan, it's the Taurus. Oh, we found her. Well, come on. Let's get across and... Uh-oh. Notice that? Tripeds. Circling around the ship. Tripeds. Oh, how can we possibly reach the Taurus with them there? If we get anywhere near, we'll be taken prisoner again. What can the three adventurers do now? Is escape impossible? And what of the streak searching anxiously for them with her radar? There are exciting developments ahead. So be sure you hear the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost! In space! Lost in space! space. An adventure adventure with with Rocky Star! While the street cruisers thousands of miles away around the outer ring of Saturn, probing for the Taurus with her radar, the other ship remains hidden on the dark side of a satellite planetoid. 
Ilma, Ivan, and Paul are trying to escape from the weird tripeds that inhabit the planetoid, but they come in sight of the Taurus only to find it being guarded by tripeds. Ilma's voice is sharp with disappointment and anxiety as it comes over the intercom radio. Well, how can we possibly reach the Taurus now? We'll be taken prisoner again. We cannot stay here, that is certain. We'll have to do something, Ivan. I wonder if we could jump them. Oh, we're so far away. The ground between is so open they could see us coming, even in this half darkness. We have the ray guns. Maybe. Uh, no, no, look. The very thing. What? A shallow sort of gully running along the ground. See? See there? The line of shadow. You mean creep up on them? Oh, of course. But let's take this thing out carefully. We don't want any bungling. I think I have the answer. If we could get close enough in this in this low gravity, we could actually jump over them, as you said. That's it. Of course. Cover the last few yards with one almighty leap and down them. But what's the vulnerable spot? You can't hit them on the base of the skull or anything like that, because there's nothing to show where it is with these things. I think I know. There's a sort of bony bulge above their eye. Perhaps that would be the same as their skull. I think you are right, Ilma. Very well. Now, now let's see. There are three. I don't think Ilma should be in it. Nor do I. Very well. We wriggle along the galley as far as we can. Watch their movements a while, then jump too. The other we will attend to afterwards. Right. You'll be all right here, Ilma? I think so. Oh, do be careful. Don't worry, we will. Come into the galley and don't make a sound. One seems to stay behind the ship quite a lot. A good thing. When the other two are a few feet apart, we will jump. I'll take the right and you the left. Yes, and... Oh! What? The course! I don't know. I don't know the course to get through. For right, sake, I'd forgotten that. What do we do? Well, we must somehow force the third one to help us. Now get ready. Can you see clearly? Yeah. Hope I can judge it. They are approaching. Nearly. Hey, Ivan. Help me. It's got its legs around me. I'm losing willpower. Not for long. This is it, Tripod. Gotcha. Ivan. Oh, what? Paul, how... I gave him the butt of my pistol. Ivan. Paul, are you all right? Right as radar, Ilma. Come over quickly. Oh, well, look out. The other one's coming. Give him the ray blast. No, we need him. Point the gun at him. <laughs> he doesn't catch on. I'll blast that bush. That stopped him. He doesn't like the look of it. Good. Hilma, open the airlock quickly. Yes, Ivan. How do we make them understand what we want? Concentrate. We go up there. We go. Understand? Go. What course? Course. Tell us what course. You want course. The telepathic voice. Course. Tell us. Quickly or you'll get this gun. Course not known. He's saying he doesn't know. We'll soon find out. See that hatch? You see? Get inside. See this gun? You go inside. Inside or I fire. No. Wrong breathing. He means we breathe oxygen and he doesn't. Yes, yes. Wrong breathing. Cause death. Tell us the cause or or, or you come to. The cause. Well, this is taking too long, Ivan. Yes, yes. yes. Drive him in. Come on, you. No, no. Tell cause. Ah. That's better. Paul, go in and and set it on the controls. I'll stay here and keep this gun on him. Right. You send the course to my brain, understand? Send course to me. It is understood. Hurry, Paul. And the instant you've got it, buzz the airlock light. But please be quick. Followed anxiously by Ilma, Paul hurries to the control deck and sits at the controls. And then slowly, strange figures and calculations come into his head. As if in a dream, he sets them on the complicated control instruments. Reaching for the switch, Ilma presses the airlock light. Seconds later, the inner door slides open. Then Ivan is taking off his helmet and hurrying to the control deck. Oh, you have the course set, Paul. Yeah. And those tripeds are bowling up in droves. Then don't wait any longer. Right. Hold tight, everyone. Firing rockets. I 
I only hope that thing gave us the right course. Some distance away, the streak is cruising steadily along the perimeter. Suddenly, Mitch looks up from the radar screen. Hey, Racky. Yeah? Found something, Mitch? Uh, I'm not sure. Hey, what do you mean you're not sure? Well, I think I might have picked up a rocket blast. For heaven's sake, Mitch, why all the uncertainty? Surely you must know whether you did or not. Well, that's just the trouble, Rocky boy. You see, I was yawning. When I yawn, I always shut my eyes. When I open them, I just thought I caught a flash of some kind. Only a bit of a flash. Hey, I wish you wouldn't yawn at important moments, Mitch. Well, I just couldn't help it. I... Hey, wait a minute, Rocky. There is something. Yeah. Where? Well, it's hard to pick out amongst the echoes from all those rocks and planetoids and stuff. Did you see there? Yeah. Hey, it's moving across the path of everything else. That could be anything but a spaceship. Stand by for acceleration, Mitch. Right. If that ship manages to get through, we want to be on hand to intercept her. Don't speak too soon, Ilma. May only be luck so far. If the course is wrong, there is nothing we can do about it. Come back, influence they sent after us is going. Yeah, thanks to Ivan's idea of showing one of our microfilms and concentrating on that. Oh, it was a great struggle to keep the projector in action for a while. I wanted to switch it off and turn back. Oh, it was wonderful seeing pictures of Earth again, wasn't it? Yeah. If we get through this, I vote we try and set a course and go straight back home. But what about the other ship? Well, never mind them. We've relied on them too much already. What do you say, Ivan? Well, I, I was against the idea before, but, but after seeing those films, if we find no sign of another ship, I say let's try for Earth. Say, you notice anything? We still haven't hit anything. I cannot understand how such a course could be calculated. These things or people must, take, must, must make a great study of the rings. They must know the velocity, they move, and somehow they have calculated just what speed is needed to pass through without collision. I wonder by what strange processes they know these things. I don't care how they do it. Look. The stars. Clear space. We have got away safely. We are safe. Long before the streak can reach them, the Taurus hurtles clear of the great ring of debris. It is some time before the other ship reaches the spot. Still got them on the screen, Mitch? Yeah, Rocky boy. Screaming away ahead of us around the planet. Mm. Hey, look, that great storm or convulsion going on there on Saturn. You know, we should be watching that sort of thing instead of chasing three irresponsible juveniles. That's our job. Yes, I know, it's our job. But, boy, I'd really like to investigate. Well, you just keep well away from them rings. I'm happy to chase those three kids. It would be so simple, so simple to investigate. Huh? Hey, listen, Rocky boy, just keep your mind on the job like a good boy. Course bearing multiplied by orbital velocity divided by speed. What? Geocentric velocity 240731. Oh, Modified by depth of 7539. Where do you get this stuff? Main bearing 117.5. One, one hey, Rocky, you're not altering course into that stuff. Yes. Yes. Yes, main bearing 117.5. One, one hey, Rocky. Rocky, you can't. Hey, Rocky, you listen to me. You'll wreck us. What are you trying to do? 117.5. One, one Rocky, listen to me. Your wreckers will be cosmic mincemeat. Rocky! <laughs> Rocky, what are you trying to do? Uh, Rocky! 117.5. One, one, Rocky, stop it! Stop it! Hey, die! Die, come quick! Something's happened to Rocky! He's trying to head us into the rings! <laughs> Rocky sits as if hypnotized, while Mitch wrestles violently to keep his hand from the defector firing button. Once again, the power of the tripeds is at work. Will Rocky really plunge the streak in toward the strange red satellite? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed episode of this Rocky Star adventure, 
Lost in space. 